Oh, let's go, let's go. Man, I don't know about you guys, but I was sweating that one out. But let's get into this. The New York Knicks enter tonight at 6 p.m. facing the Philadelphia 76ers. And from the jump, you thought this was going to be in the Knicks' favor. An easy one, that be, because Josh Hart knocks down the three to open up the game. But then, none other than Joel Embiid decided to get into his MVP caliber bag and started to make light work of the New York Knicks in that first quarter. Now, you thought things were going to go downhill with Embiid going off in the first, but wait, wait, wait for the cavalry to come through because we had Boyan Bogdanovich, a.k.a. Bodega, and none other than Miles Deuce McBride to come through in that second quarter and inject some life into this New York Knicks team that surely needed it on the offensive end because Brunson and Dante weren't having it in the first half. With that being said, Embiid did have a scary fall in the second half, and it looked like the Knicks were about to take full advantage of an Embiidless team. However, Embiid would come back in the third quarter, and then not Embiid because he didn't want to injure the knee after doing a self-putback dunk in the second. It was then Tyrese Maxey's turn to take over and run the show for Philadelphia, getting them back into this game and taking a lead for a hot second after Brunson, you know, started to get some cook, started to cook in that third quarter. But then again, it comes back to the bench because the bench in that fourth quarter injects even more life. Dante wasn't having it. Okay, McBride, uh, Brunson was struggling, but McBride, Boyan Bogdanovich, Josh Hart, OG Anadobi, and none other, none other than the block this monster himself. Mitchell Robinson playing excellent defense tonight, the best hit he could against an MVP caliber player. All showed up defensively, whether it was getting clutch rebounds. Nick out rebounded, especially on the offensive glass against the Philadelphia 76ers, and clutch three point shooting. The Knicks would ultimately win this game. They would win 111 to 104 to take game one of this series between the Knicks and the 76ers. Make sure to call in today. You already know what it is. I'm your host for right now, Alex Terrace, a.k.a. the Tratacaster. With me on the other side is my guy, CK2K, or some may know him as 2KTV. So make sure to call in. We're using Discord tonight only, so make sure to click the link that TM, I hope, dropped into the channel so that way you all can get off your takes tonight. And make sure to remember that this show is sponsored by Underdog Fantasy. Use that promo code KFTV to get up to a $100 match. Man, CK. Mm. Man. I know. I saw you, do, I saw you doing the play-by-play. -play. Mm. I know you were going through a wave of emotions. But mm. before I ask you how you're feeling, I just got to mm. say, I just got to say this. It ain't so easy, is it, Paul Reed? It ain't so easy out there. Uh, huh? You said this is going to be the easy route to, to right. take it to Run the that block. Finals. Where's Run that energy that now, son? Where's, oh, 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 and by the way, by the yeah. way, this guy who was talking so much, CK, yeah. finished the game with his season average of four points and nothing else. So mm. all that talking, Paul Reed, mm. to get kicked in your chest. Oh, mm -hmm. let's go. But CK, how you feeling, man? How you feeling? Yeah, yeah, I, I don't want to endorse bullying. I was going to say, everybody DM him that block of Mitchell Robinson blocking him on that three-point shot when he had 3.2 seconds left on the shot clock. He thought he could get that over Mitchell Robinson? Mm. Ask, mm. ask your superstar how shooting over Mitchell Robinson was because Mitchell Robinson put on a clinic. We're going to talk about that. I'm hyped up, man. I can't believe New York Knicks won this game at all. I don't care 111, 104. I don't care uh, 79 to 1,085. The fact that the New York Knicks won this game where Jalen Brunson shot more shots than he had points, where the Knicks won this game where Dante DiVincenzo, most improved, missed by a few seconds, was did not exist, where the New York Knicks won this game where a guy like Josh Hart was having cardio in one half and then hit clutch threes in the fourth quarter. The Knicks, what I'm getting at is the Knicks didn't even play at a good level and still won game one. And I'm supposed to be, I'm, I'm hearing that the Knicks are the easy, the easiest second seed in the mm. Eastern Conference in the NBA history. Mm. Talk to him, CK. What are what like this is what I'm talking about. And he, what we gonna hear when you turn on y'all little TVs, you play your little YouTube clips and stuff, you're gonna be hearing Stephen Knott Smith talking about, you know, oh, I told y'all this entire time I knew the New York Knicks was gonna do this. Or you're gonna turn on whatever and say, Well, you know, the New York Knicks maybe they figured it out only because Embiid was hobbled. We're not gonna get any respect. But us right here in this chat on the Twitterverse, Knicks Nation, we know 
that the New York Knicks, regardless of whatever's going on, you got to play a full 48 against us. And we showed that tonight because guess what? You hear that knocking? That's Deuce McBride. We got we got guys. We, you heard you heard what Alex said. We got an Arsenal in the back ready to go. That's Deuce McBride. That's Mitchell Robinson. My knee's doing just fine. That's double O bogey. I, I don't know if y'all saw this post game. Alex, did you see the post game where my man looking like a damn secret spy? Double O bogey. Bodega. Middle-aged Luca off the bench ready to play. The New York Knicks showed out in game one ready to fulfill my prophecy of Knicks in five because mm -hmm. we did not play well tonight and won. Come on, man. They're not ready for it. us, bro. CK, you said it. I mean, there's so many things to talk about in this game, but I just want to start off with this. You, you said it right. The Knicks didn't even play well tonight. No. Brunson was off his game. Brunson went eight for 26 tonight, one and six from downtown. Still got 22 points because he got to the free throw line. But Bro, he didn't it. even have a Brunson-esque <laughs> game. Mm. And Embiid, Embiid played his game. I don't want to hear, oh, Embiid got hurt and all this. Thank he you. came back out there. Okay, sure, he wasn't attacking the paint that he was supposed to. But, hey, he was out there, and he still got fouled, and he still got to the free throw line, like the free throw merchant that he is, and he still got his. And guess what? Maxi did his thing by being a blur and getting down into the lane. And you know what? We still beat him. Dante didn't shoot well. Brunson didn't shoot well. On, okay. Man. And then what do you have to rely on? Mc, on McBride. Come on, on Boyan Bogdanovich. Bodega, by the way, because that man's open. All right. And then you also have Mitchell Robinson. That is who you relied on. Josh Hart clutched threes. Okay. Mm. That is what happened tonight. That is what, and if you're going to tell me, Philly fans, for anyone who's ready to hop in this chat, or I know some of you are watching right now. I know some of you are watching right now in secret because you're ready to tune in and think, oh, we're going to we're gonna come in here to be the keyboard warriors and start saying, guess what? Guess what? Guess what? We're, we're going to take you guys out. You guys aren't ready for it to be. You guys don't get it. No, none of that. All right. You're all tuning in right now. You're all watching. It's about to be a nice, a nice little trip uh, in round in game two for you guys, too, where Brunson doesn't have back to back bad games. Brunson doesn't have back to back bad games. I had to say it twice because that doesn't happen. So, guess what? <laughs> Get ready for game two because Brunson is going to come cook. But, CK, mm. let's break this game down because there's let's just so much down. to talk about. Outside of Brunson not, not hitting well, we got we to start off with, with the good stuff, man. And I think it's got to start off with Mitchell Robinson because Isaiah Hartenstein, yes. you know, he struggled tonight. But, Mitch, I mean, what an effort tonight. Look, he didn't do a perfect job. But it was a solid, well-rounded job to slow down Embiid even after, even after uh, Embiid went down, right? And, and for him to come out there, get his eight points, 12 rebounds, just be a monster on the offensive glass as we're so accustomed to seeing because he ended the game with uh, seven offensive rebounds to get 12 boards in total tonight. Like he was a prime example of you control the glass, the Knicks are able to win this thing. And for him to just play defense that he did on Joel Embiid, for a guy who's going to bulldoze, whether it's driving down the lane, a guy who can, you know, extend the floor because he can shoot threes as well, as we saw tonight, for Mitchell Robinson to play the defensive, to be so versatile defensively that we're so accustomed to, even with the switches on Maxi, you got to give a shout out to, to Mitch, but especially the job that he did on Embiid tonight. A hundred percent, 100 percent. You know what I mean? And it, it, you know what? I got I got a little bit of hate. People, I don't know what the chat was thinking. The chat thought I was hating on Mitch, but I, you you know what I'm gonna say. The, the, Mitch is what I think it was his first or second shot. He had a gimme layup right at the rim, and instead of dunking it down, he went for a cute little two handed layup and missed it. I I and I called him out. And that moment, I feel like that miss right there. We saw Mitchell Robinson say, "What is going on, Mitch? This is the playoffs." Because immediately after that, he got a defensive stop and Mitchell Robinson saw red for the rest of the game. He took that matchup with, with, uh, with, Ju uh, what's his name? Julius Randle. I miss you, buddy. With, uh, with, uh, uh, Joel Embiid personal. And we saw him taking him, uh, like bar for bar. You know, Joel Embiid got a few moves on him. There was one or two plays offensively. Joel Embiid, I'm going to give him his credit. That's a superstar level player. But for the most part, especially in clutch, there is no Knicks uh, attempt at a comeback without the likes of Mitchell Robinson. Yeah, we're going to talk about Deuce. Yeah, we're going to even talk about my X-Factor, uh, Boyan Bogdanovich. But to me, Mitchell Robinson is arguably the most important Nick in tonight's win for the mere fact that we saw Embiid 
hurting and laboring, still able to get 15 of their 30-something points in the first quarter, where it was looking like doom and gloom, and he was about to go crazy on us. Injury aside, he was still being active. He was still being aggressive, and Mitchell Robinson took that personal, and he did a great job with that matchup. You mentioned it, seven offensive boards, giving us opportunities to get uh, second-chance points. On top of that, what do you have, four blocks? Chat, please mm -hmm. please forgive me. Please let me know if that's what it four was. Four blocks, DK. Yeah. Did a great job. And also, too, like, yeah, Tyrese Maxey got activated a little bit there. But outside of those two, nobody else were able to even sniff around the rim because Mitchell Robinson was looking like game one through how many games it was before he got hurt of this season. We're seeing him slowly unlock back into the Mitchell Robinson that we uh, we remember. So that being said, Alex, I want to bring a question to you. I kind of said it in my play-by-play -play today, and I'll get my answer, and I want to hear what you have to say. Because of this, and this is no shot at iHeart because iHeart's great, and he did a great job um, in the, uh, the third quarter doing a good job uh, guarding him, but do we start Mitchell Robinson now off rip in game two? I say yes. I'm saying yes for the mere fact I just want him on the floor as long as Embiid's on the floor. It's not a demotion of iHeart. It's just uh, right now Mitchell Robinson looks like he has it figured out defensively on Embiid. And I want to nip that Embiid thing in the bud off rip in game two. So my, I don't think he's going to do it. I think Tibbs is going to keep the lineup how it is. But I'm just asking, I'm opening up that question to you. Do you want to see Mitchell Robinson off rip game one, minute one, uh, Mitchell Robinson? Or you're perfectly fine just keeping it how it is. Let Isaiah Robinson, or Isaiah Hardenstein do, his, do what he does and Robinson off the bench. You want to keep it out there? Robinson, wow. If only Put we together, I'm ready. Them. Yeah. If only we could do the fusion dance, that'd be great. We, league ain't ready for that. We can't do that. That's too much cheating. That's too, that's too much cheating. But I think you just keep it the same way, CK. I, I like that Mitchell Robinson was able to come off the bench and still be impactful. And the only reason I, I say keep it that way, because if the offense does start clicking and Hartenstein, you know, gets his confidence back because he was short on some floaters today, um, okay. the facilitating, you know, could still be there, especially with guys who can cut back door between Dante, Hart, and OG. I still want that offense to click in the beginning because you're going to need that offense, man. Defense is going to be there, but I want that offense to get uh, get going. I think after, if it's too much for iHeart in tomorrow's game, in Tuesday's game, because you, 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 you gave yourself some leeway now with, with iHeart being in that starting rotation because you won the game, right? Yeah. I think you can still go out there, have the same rotation, See if you can get into rhythm, and if it doesn't happen, then you can make that switch in game three and then be there. But, look, Mitch played 30 minutes tonight, all right? He was on a minutes restriction, so so is iHeart, you know? And Mitch was able to do the damn thing. But what I do like, too, is that defense, it's just so much defense with that second unit. You, want to you know what I mean? Like, and that's really what changed it. And it really changed the outcome of this game because when – the non embiid minutes showed up. Nobody else outside of Maxi could really do anything. Yeah, he had some Kyle Lowry nonsense that was, you know, <laughs> infuriating throughout matches, throughout parts of this game. But with with um with that defense for the second, you really stopped what the Sixers wanted to do out there. So, you know, that that that's important. And I'm seeing you all in the ch in the chat right now saying that the audio is a little bit choppy. Gamba, can we check to see what's going on with the audio just to make sure that it's crispier? What's going on? <laughs> is it? Oh, I yeah. didn't see that. It says CK yeah. Wildland. <laughs> it's a question. It's just a question. I, I'm just, look, I, I'm only bringing it up just to see what, you know, just a talking point. Because I, I think the right thing to do is like, like Alex was saying, you know, rock with them off the bench. It's fixed but now? It, you know? Okay. It's there. Oh, there it's I'm a fixed home. I'm sorry. No. It's better sorry. now? Tell, tell me what. Audio's choppy. Alex, audio's choppy. What, what's going on? I don't know who. Is it ready? Is it good? What's happening? Audio crazy choppy. Sounds like yeah, you're working on it. Bubble slowing up. What does that mean? You sound like we drowning? What you saying? What's happening? Audio. Let's see. Let's see. Gamba's working on it. So we are. We are. Let's see. I hear. I see better. Better. We're talking. Let us know what's going on. Tell if it's it's not good. I see that in and out. Nope, not good. Still not good. All right, better. Uh, not your <laughs> yours. Not good. Alex. I blame Discord. That's what I blame. Oh uh, man, Alex drunk. Okay. 
Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> sounds like y'all lagging. Y'all in bikini bottom. All right, bro. <laughs> We're in bikini bottom. All right, bro. Dang. Wow. Audio like baseball team from Sheesh. Well, we're still working on it. We're still trying to figure out. Here we go. Our audio is good as it works. Well, shout out to 2,000. Shout out. We got 2,300 people in the chat right now. And it is on and popping right now for KFTD Post Game Live. Salute to all you for, for tapping in. Alex is AI. Thank you. Technology is <laughs> not in this fight back. We are getting killed. Yo, yo the AOL is acting up. This is crazy. Oh, That's my. crazy. Let us fight back. My it's God. God. Messing with us. Is it that bad? Holy cow. All right. Let me, let me hop out the Discord and, and try this again. Hold on a second. Wait, what are you guys hearing? Ha, what, what, what now? What now? Wait, what are you guys hearing? I, it sounds nah, fine. I, to me. I hear I'm it on my end life. too. It's, it's. I really? think it's the Zoom. Yeah. Because how do I? How do I sound now? How about now? How you guys? How does it sound now? Oh yeah, no, it does sound like bubbles. I hear. I hear what they're talking about. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. 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 Great. Yep. 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 Very bad art static. Right. Let's see. I'm gonna restart the Discord. No, it's bad. Sorry, it's going off the wall. It sounded fine for me. Yeah, I hear it now. You guys. No, you got it. It was it do sound bubbles. Everything they're saying is actually accurate too. They're not wrong. It sounds like Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, yeah, but it's not. CP did this just to wait to come back so that way he can, uh, you know, get the take off. So. <laughs> All right. How's it sound now? Does it sound better? All right. Control to leave. Uh, okay. I think we're going to try to go over to Zoom right now. Yeah, so let's go over to Zoom. Let's go over to Zoom. I'll mute the Discord. Check, check, my check. Restart, restart. It's a scare. <laughs> yeah, see? Now it's clear. <laughs> yeah, it was All Discord. Right. Yeah, I figured. I already figured it was Discord. You said the fan is... <laughs> <laughs> All right. How about this? Does it sound better? Can they hear us yet? Can they hear us yet? We got to let them catch up. We got to let them catch up. Better. Good. good. Are we good? good. How's it better. sound? How's it no sound? How's it sound? There we go. There we go. There we go. All right. Are we sound better? We sound good. Sounds there better. There we go. Great. Much better. Okay. There, there we, we go. go. We, we, we are Discord. back. We are back in business. Yeah. We are back in yeah. business. Cool. Yeah. So anyway, we like now, the mix now the that uh, we finished quarter. working through our dial-up internet service, you know, yep. you know, the, <clears throat> apparently we didn't pay uh, pay enough bills around here to get uh, quality internet. So we're gonna work on that during the off season. But hey, we're back. We're live. 
We're back in it. Salute to Knicks Nation. Thank you all for tuning in for another KFTV Post Game Live. I'm here with my guy CK2K on the other side, or 2K TV to some of you. Make sure to hit that thumbs up button for your boys. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. The Knicks just won tonight, 111-104. They take game one away from the 76ers, who is supposed to be, you know, there's supposed to be a cakewalk for them, according to Paul Reed. I'm not going to let Paul Reed live that down. Anywho, CK, let's keep this conversation going, all right, because we talked about uh, Mitchell Robinson. Like I said, I'd still think keep him off the bench for now. Let Isaiah Hartenstein, you know, be in there because I like I want to see the offense just start clicking before you can make any adjustments. If he, if they need to do a whole revamping, there's game three and so forth to take that. Um, but, but I got to ask you about our guy Josh Hart tonight because this man played 42 minutes. Went five of twelve from the field, four of eight from downtown, eight of ten from the free throw line. Gets thirteen boards, twenty two points, two assists, one steal tonight. This guy is just, you know, what looked like a very shaky game from Josh Hart. He was clutch in the fourth quarter. I mean, between yeah. the rebounding. Especially when the shot clock's winding down, my man, that's when you're the best three point shooter. You don't have to think about it at all. You just knock down shots. Just keep shooting like that. Don't think too much about it. Exactly. That's that that's part. when he was great, man. That's when he was fantastic for the Knicks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, I, and I I say that's my eternal beef with uh, Josh Hart to the point where sometimes it sounds like I'm hating. I'm not hating. I it's just I feel like I'm like a brother. That's like, I know you are better than what you were showing. Like, we, I know you could consistently be that fringe triple-double guy because there's just so many times where we see him turn down shots. Like, at the chat, our chat today, or the play-by-play, -play, I, 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 I had to stop reading him because Josh Hart would turn down so many jumpers, and that's been my issue. And you saw that in the fourth quarter. Like, when the confident, when he just played confident and plays his game, the dude's nice. Josh Hart is nice when he's not thinking – and he has the ability uh, to, to – or not the ability. When he has the confidence to just attack the rim, that opens up so much offense for the rest of the team. And I, I, that's what my issue is with Josh Hart. I just want you to do that from minute one to minute 48. Um, I understand he plays a lot of minutes. He's got to be tired. But, like, you saw it in that fourth quarter. Like, Josh Hart is a valuable piece. Hustle Hart is a nickname for a reason. And, you know, I, I'm hoping that he sees this footage, sees this film, especially in that fourth quarter – and realizes how valuable of a player he is for this team, and we see that on a consistent basis. Because yeah, he, if like 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 we were talking about with um with the, the bench guys, Deuce, uh, Mitch, and and Bodega, uh, you know, Josh Hart was that second option for our starting unit because we like you like you mentioned, we got to get the offense going, and Josh Hart definitely uh, did that at a very good rate when it mattered towards the end. So props to Hart. I just need you to do it. Every night, because every possession matters now, New York Knicks. So let's not, you know, let's not have a repeat of the first quarter, please, going forward in this series. Absolutely. He's so critical, man. I mean, I think he played the entire second half. Yes. And just stop with the jump passing. Stop Bro, being afraid to shoot. Him please and Dante. Stop, man. It what, is, I, Jay Wright I, I can't take all that. that. I hope they, they Jay Wright didn't coach that, because him and Dante with that jump passing, it grinds my gears. Shout Bro, out to Peter it Griffin. is <laughs> so bothersome, especially yes. because it's like the hesitation on top of yes. that makes it even worse. Just makes it even worse. But yes. my God, how important was he tonight? Huge. But CK, we got to talk about another guy. A guy that, by the way, CP does not want to anoint this nickname. But yet, and yeah, even last night on the mega panel. All right. He didn't want to acknowledge that. Okay. We know he's still upset about. Alec Burke's not doing the damn thing for, for this team. But we have to give praise where praise is due because this guy has been turning it up from the end of the season and now game one of the playoffs in Madison Square Garden, which, by the way, CP said he has to earn it on the Garden Four, and I think he did that tonight. It is none other than Boyan Bogdanovich. Mm. My goodness. 4-12 mm -hmm. from the field, 3-6 mm -hmm. from downtown, 2-4 from the free throw line. Gets his seven boards, by the way. That that's that low key was just like that felt quiet. One assist, 13 points in 25 minutes off the bench. That man was so critical in the second and fourth quarter. I mean, you talk about needing to get back into this game. You're talking about you need somebody to create some offense because Brunson and Dante were not having it tonight. Yeah. Bodega, Bodega was just he was open, man. Always open. Just like in New York City, a bodega's open. You need something, he's right there. 
You know, yeah. and so whether it was open threes, sidestep threes, attacking in the mid range, he was there, man. And I gotta give kudos for him because that was my X factor in the game of the week preview. That was your X factor last night, even though you stole from me, and I'm very upset about CK. Okay, so that okay. was that is you no. Know, so we we both understand that Bodega is yes. important to this Knicks success against the 76ers. Yeah, 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 hundred percent. Yeah. I, I told you, I, I really like the the double O bogey nickname, especially with how he was dressed today. Y'all gonna see the, the, the video. But uh, yeah, no, Bodega definitely earned the nickname. Um, but here's the thing too, man. The threes are great. His shooting was great. But what I love about his game, hence like what you said, and then what I also brought up last night, he is just the veteran presence. He just knows how to get the ball in the basket. And it's not just by the shooting. He's probably if it until Hart does it consistently, he's probably our best uh, attacker on this New York Knicks team. Am I wrong? Like, who is a better attacker on the Knicks that we have that consistently is going to the rim? Because that's one thing that he did when the shots weren't falling after that first quarter. We weren't getting shots to go down. This man checks in and he's instantly going to the hole. He hit the three, then he immediately goes, gets fouled. And that's something that I feel like is so valuable in his game that does not get enough credit. Yeah, he's a phenomenal shooter. Mid, you know, like I call him middle-aged Luca. That's my nickname, you know. But the the thing that he brings to this team that I feel like we need to, it needs to be more contagious, is that attacking the rim ability. And it just makes the offense so easy for everyone else. And like like like, like we were saying, when with him being on the floor with Deuce McBride, like it was just such a nice nice feeling that the bench unit had the starters back tonight something that we were like we were worried after the trade with Detroit was we lost we we thought we lost that bench presence but now we saw tonight with the big help from Bodega that no when the bench is struggling a little or when the the starters are struggling a little bit the bench has got their back and we saw that tonight Deuce Bodega offensively tremendous for us and now let's just hope that that X factor does this the entire uh, run in the playoffs, but especially in this series because they took advantage of the Philadelphia 76ers bench for sure. For sure, absolutely. And then you mentioned the last guy we got to talk about, and we're going to try to take some calls, see if the Discord is working. Uh, but if not, hang tight. CP is on his way. So probably when he gets back, we can route it through his Discord and we can get all your takes in. So make sure to hang tight, hang in there, keep tapping in. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button for your boys. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. So last guy, Miles McBride. My goodness. Go what does he have against the Philadelphia 76ers? It is like they just exist. Mm -hmm. And he and he's like that Jordan beam. I took he's it personally off. because yeah. he took it personally tonight, man. Yeah. Seven to 12 from the field. Mm. Five to seven from downtown. Gets you 21 points. Three rebounds. Four assists. One steal. And just solid defense on Maxi. who, look, just like Joel Embiid, you're not going to be perfect. It's not going to be complete shutdown. But... He was doing his best to keep Maxi in front of him and be a deterrent for Maxi to attack the lane. Okay. The only way Maxi was able to get a full head of steam and get downhill was just, you know, quick switches and making sure that he can weave through the lane. But McBride did a solid job tonight, I thought, offensively and defensively. McBride just growing into his own at this point as a player, right before our very eyes, in the bit on the biggest stage possible, in the biggest possible moments. Shout out to Deuce McBride, man. And the Deuce is loose. And you know what else we're not really giving him credit for? Like, I, I, I had to say it at the end of the play-by-play, the -play, like, this is Deuce's actual first playoff series. Like, we know he was on the team with us, but this is Deuce's actual first playoff series with minutes. And right. I'm not talking about just playing, like, a few minutes and just, you know, adding your diva. No, Deuce McBride was our sixth man in this game and has shown that he can be – that six man, I, I I said it before, you know, you, you, Emmanuel quickly gave Deuce the keys, and Deuce been driving that car like he it, like it was his because Deuce McBride um, since the trade has just been remarkable, and for like you just said, Alex, for him to do this in game one, game one where there was worries like which version of Miles are we gonna get? Is he gonna falter under the pressure? Can he truthfully relieve Brunt? All those questions get answered immediately, and it just looked like it was it was just another day in the office for Deuce. It didn't look like he was forcing it. Deuce McBride was out there shooting off the dribble. Deuce McBride had someone on his hip, didn't care, still pulled up for three, hit the three. The man had a pump fake, step back three on the right corner. No big deal. 
Deuce McBride was taking big shots. It wasn't just, you know, taking opportunities and advantage. No, he was creating offense. The man off a crossover, a left-handed layup over Joel Embiid. Like, what are we talking about? Deuce McBride is definitely showing us that we we <laughs> two things actually showing us that we definitely made the right investment in keeping him of the young guys, you know. And two, he needs to fire his agent because that contract is a Ooh. highway robbery. Highway robbery. Highway robbery. robbery because he's worth way more than that poor kid is getting paid for. And I almost feel bad watching him play. I'm like, damn, we only paying this dude about five dollars. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah, man. Yeah, and at the I, time when he probably signed his name on the dotted line, he was like, "I don't know how far I'll, I'll, I, I like because yeah. for the first for for so long it was just questionable. Like, when will I get minutes? What's going to happen? And now he's getting right. a lot of minutes, and he's getting oh, he's just showing mm -hmm. how valuable he is to this team. And look, as you said, first playoffs, man. Like yeah. a lot of guys just aren't ready for the moment, but he was just game one ready no for this deal. moment. Yeah. Like we're talking about behind the back dribble, step back, sidestep threes. It's just he looks like a seasoned vet the way he's out there playing and like he's been playing in multiple playoff games. Yeah. But McBride, man, just coming up clutch, man. I need Absolutely. the Knicks to put Deuce in every commercial. I like they gotta they gotta pay this kid back somehow and endorse like put him in the commercials. Just have him do a full performance at the sphere. Like he gotta get oh, his man. money. Like they he they, they, they <laughs> we robbing this poor kid. We gotta find a way to get him his money back, man. This is crazy because he has been extraordinary. And now when you're doing this on our biggest stage, this is a home game, Alex. Second seed Knicks, home court advantage. First game of this play, like actually playing the playoffs. Like I'm just, Insane. it's crazy, man. It's crazy. A second rounder, bro. Insane. Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe they can use him for social media. I don't know, on the YouTube they channel, like something. how they had Mitch's block party and give him yeah. all those earnings. You know, yeah, that, that's what something. he needs right now. That's what he needs to do to, to make it back up. Yeah. But yo, CK, we got a super chat. It we got a super chat right now. Shout out to the rhyme animal Chuck D hey. for a hashtag PE in the chat. He gives us a ten dollar super chat. He says the fact that Mitch can look Embiid in the eye, go body to body on him, made us not double team him. I would continue this pattern of attacking. I expected Nurse to hack him, hack a Mitch. It caught him off guard. And yo, look, <laughs> what they did didn't even go hack a Mitch in the end, and, and he knocked happened? down. I knocked down both of them. Come on, <laughs> both. Do of it them. again, both of <laughs> them. Come on, man. Yo, Mitch. Yo, they really hacked Mitch, and Mitch is like, you know what? I'm gonna knock both of them down. That is, yeah. yo, that is the cherry on top mm -hmm. of just like. Putting this team away in game one out of their misery. Good Lord. I loved everything about it. Yeah. He didn't see the clip of Mitchell Robinson getting some extra shots in the night before. He didn't see the clip. Mitch was playing. Like, Mitch is getting ready. He, he's taking this serious. But go Absolutely. ahead. Try, try it again. Try it again, Nick. Try it again, man. Try it again, indeed. All right. So, because since we're still working on the Discord and trying to get that going, we will take some questions through the chat for the time being. Uh, Gamba, just give me a message in the chat if we can try going through the Discord and see how that works. Um, so to all the franchise channel members, if you do want to ask a question in the chat, throw a question in the chat, and I'll shout you guys out too. We got Brandon McNeely in here, we got Dwayne Vogel, we got P Dub. Shout out to you guys. Shout out to Ty Valius for being a channel member for two months. He's like two giving months. the game ball to Hart for this one because he showed up when needed. Absolutely. Absolutely, indeed. Shout out to the shells for being a mod. Let's see, let's see, let's see. <laughs> what do you, oh, hold on one second. I didn't even read that. Thanks, Alex. I forgot I had cherry pie in the. It's like, oh, <laughs> I, I know that. Oh, feeling. wait a minute. <laughs> oh, snap. Yes. <laughs> like when you find a dollar in your pocket and you're like, yes. go find a couple bucks and you're like, oh, yeah. wait a minute. Yeah, I know that feeling, man. Oh, brother. My All man, right. Shells, skip into the fridge right now, bro. Okay, skip it to the fridge right now. He's like, oh, we got a win, and I got some cherry pie. Mm. I'm about to tear this pie up. I'm about to <laughs> do his little happy dance. I see you, shows. We know uh, you. You ain't gotta act like that's not what you're doing. We see you, dog. We see you. We see. You. Oh man, crazy, 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 crazy. Let's see. <laughs> Let's see what we got in the chat. Let's see what we got in the chat. Anything? Anything in the chat right now? Yeah, chat chat is showing love to Mitch as as 
deserved as he's as well deserved. A lot of people saying shout to Mitch, Mitch. <laughs> Yo. All right. Here we go. CP is loading up the computer. He is firing up his computer. He is turning on that jalopy because it was overheating last night. We saw, as we saw, as we saw, and he said, he's coming right now to fix the discord. Everybody. If you want to call in, CP's about to be here. The Discord is about to be fixed. It's about to be fixed. So make sure to line up. All right. See, we got a couple of you on Discord <laughs> right now up. getting ready. What are you smiling over there? What, what are you saying? What are you saying? No, nah, you're just saying that they got to line up. Yeah. Get, get, in, man, line. get up. in the queue. Yeah, get in the queue, as, as the bitch would say. <laughs> get in the queue, bro. Get bro. All right. Okay. So let's see, what do we got here? What do we got here? Shout out to TM for doing the Lord's work right now and throwing me all the super chats. Shout out to Frankie Bricks for being a franchise channel member. Shout out to Dwight Clarks. Shout out to Murphy. Shout out to John Daniel. Shout out to Yo Chase Boogie. Shout out to Sharon and shout out to P-Dub. Welcome all of you to the franchise channel membership. We, we appreciate your support. All right, let's get to some of the super chats now. We got Travis Weir with the $5 super chat saying one down, 15 to go. Go, New York. Go, New York. Go. All right. We got a $2 super chat from Slipstream. Shout out to you. We got a $5 super chat from Afrique, New York. And it says 7, 1,700 people in here and 275 likes. Come on. Support the channel. Uh, okay. And he says, we're going worldwide algorithm, y'all. All right. Appreciate all. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. We got Luis Rios with another with a five dollar super chat. He said, "Let's go, Knicks." Mitch had Embiid locked the family show up, baby. <laughs> All right, we got the five dollar pound from the DJ Edzy. Says the audio is bad, like playing Quay. Yikes! Don't do anything. Oh my! Come on, wow, man. that hurts. Yeah, <laughs> damn, that hurts. Sheesh, we didn't need to do was that. Hey man, he didn't need to catch a stray on this show. It's all good, man. He didn't. He didn't need that. Come on now. Uh, shout out to Brandon Guest, who's been a franchise channel member for 12 months. He says Watch Party was a movie. Shout out to the wife on our two year anniversary. Congratulations to you guys on your two year anniversary. Nixon four. Deuce was loo hashtag Deuce was loose. Hashtag Mitchy the Embiid stopper. Hashtag Tibbs made adjustments. Look at that. She did. Look at that. That he did. Shout out Holy. to Kid Kid Kuro with the five dollar super chat. Said great Knicks dub tonight. Philly pack in the air. Mm, they're smoking on that Philly pack tonight. CK looks like okay. they're smoking on that Philly pack. Okay. Woo. On that little, on those Philly cheese and what they be calling them? little Jimmy's. We got what what what, what they be saying in Philly, bro? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. All I know is that they like their basically. they like their cheese whiz on their cheese steaks and uh mm. and they what was it what, 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 a John right everyone's a John yeah, out there so John, whatever yeah. or whatever anything is a John is I have no idea but hey yeah they be calling sprinkles Jimmy's or something like that bro I'm telling you bro mm. it's different yeah you don't feel shot Philly okay okay all right then all that's right. a little different yeah. all right. own one own one yeah yep all right so then we got a, we got a five dollar super chat from Joseph uh. Or Soto, shout out to you. Said great game. What do we what do we need for Brunson to have easier shots? Great call, CK two K on the play by play. Well, I guess for to make to answer that question, for for Brunson to have easier shots, uh guys gotta hit him. <laughs> like Dante. <laughs> you know what I mean? Facts. Um, and I think just for tonight, like Brunson has like one of those weird off games. I think it's an off game for him. Although I will give credit to Kelly Oubre tonight. Kelly Uber yes. was playing some solid defense. Yeah. Right? Him he, was, he did great. He, and so was Maxi. Though both of them were playing solid defense on Brunson and really making him work to get yeah. to his spots and try to get good looks that he normally knocks down. I mean, turnaround jumpers he was missing. He was falling short of some floaters. It was a tough night for Brunson, man. But I think if you get Dante to hit some shots, if you get Hartenstein back in the flow and just finding guys who are cutting and getting easy shots, I think that will help Brunson because then it takes that pressure of having to hone in on him. And, I mean, we even saw the zone tonight, you know. Thankfully, Knicks were able to break because he had guys coming in who were able to knock down the three. But I think if you get that starting unit just to get into a, a natural flow of just moving the ball, as we saw as they closed out the season, they should get back into a rhythm. What do you think, though, CK? Um... 
as far as what the the, the Knicks just being better to on uh, in game two. Or no, like how does Brunson get back into a groove? How does Br- sorry, I missed that first part because I was reading everybody talking about hoagies and Johns in the chat. Uh yeah, no. <laughs> <You> it, <do. laughs> sorry. The chat was going crazy. No, no, no. Yeah, 100 percent I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like this game was just uh one of those things where one of the two teams had to go out here and apply pressure, and Philly did that. And the Knicks responded really well. I'm not really worried about uh Jalen Brunson in game two because Alex said it best and he said it said it best twice. Brunson don't have back-to-back bad games, especially not in the garden. So I'm I'm not really worried about that. Dante DiVincenzo had good shots. They didn't fall. Jalen Brunson, as great as uh, Kelly Oubre was, he was getting to his spots. And now you saw as the game went on, you saw Brunson adapting to those double teams. Some, some instances, there's a triple team going his way. And he, he, he adapted well. So I, I feel like game two is going to be a completely different story. I'm not worried about it. Um, they just got to start hitting those shots uh, starting in the first quarter. Not in the third quarter. That's all, or technically fourth quarter. That's it. Yeah, I, mean, I think it's simple. I don't. I. Don't, I feel like yeah. Like, I know you were saying it, but I. I like the defense because I feel like the defense is what keeps us in these games. I feel like our defense and our ability to rebound the ball is the reason why we have any shots in these games. Um. So as long as that's staying uh tight and we're making shots, ain't nobody stopping the New York Knicks. I don't care. Not Knicks in five. Not Knicks in five. Let's go. Let's go. I mean, if they look, man, what are we talking about? Seventy five percent of teams that win game one go on to win the series. So we gonna give we giving JD that seventy eight. He was so close. Let's let him have the seventy eight because you I'll said it was in twenty twenty one. Hey man, that so, was like yeah, twenty twenty one, twenty twenty two. So let's give him the so, seventy eight. Yeah, sure. we we'll give his credit. Give him the seventy eight. It's high, Absolutely, but we'll man. Give it hey, I corrected myself last night. That's why I said, hey, you were right, JD. I said, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, you, no, did. you did. You did. You did. Look, man. Look. Did. Stop attacking got, CK. No, I'm not. I'm not. He got his 50 burger. We got, you know, we gotta let JD have it. He got his 50 yo, burger. He, took he, a few years, but he got hey, his yo, 50 pause. burger. Pause. Uh, no, no, dude. Sorry. Uh, but anyway. <laughs> yes, JD should be in in uh JD should be in good spirits because the 50 burger happened. You know, mm-hmm. he he was right on the on the percentage of teams that go on to this neck to the second round after winning game one. So, yes. <laughs> Shout out to Junior Caroma for the super chat. He said, orange and blue skies, baby. Shout out to you. Uh, I saw there was another super chat in here. Let's see. We got uh shout out to D-Will, who's also a franchise channel member. He said, not only did Mitch knock down the free throws, he blocked Hornball Reed's shot. Go <clears> New <throat> York. That he did, man. That sure did. Sure did. did. Right into the stands. Wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah, wouldn't have it any other sure. way. All right, now, ooh, looks like uh, the captain himself is uh, is getting his computer his ready. Computer ready. So there, there he is. There, there he is. All right, all right. We got another, we got another. I can just, hear, I can just hear, hear myself. What are you doing to me, CP? What are you doing to me, CP? Say what? You, you, get out of the Discord. Get out of the Discord. I think he's in the Discord. Everybody get out. I think of the he's Discord. in the Discord. Everybody, everybody get out, get of, out of the Discord. Get out of the Discord. Yeah. Stay in the Zoom. Yeah, we hear you. We're we're in the Zoom. We can hear you. We yeah, we hear you. Oh my! All right, I'll keep reading the super chat until CP is ready to be on screen. Uh, we got more super chat. Shout out to Christian B for the five dollars super chat. He said, "Nothing in the universe compares to being a Knicks fan. I love this team and my KFTV family. Mitchie ain't no snitchy. Salute." We got Ray Matos with the five dollars super chat. He said, "Brunson forty point game to redemption. Now loading." Ooh, he said. JB's going to come back with a vengeance. Step, shout out to you for the $5 super chat. He said, our best players didn't play their best, and we still won. I don't think people really comprehend that 4-0 sweep. Shout out to you guys. God bless New York. Stand up. Thanks. All right. And let's see. Let's see. The last super chat we got. Nope. We got all of them. We got all of them. Wait, they're saying, are we are we echoing or not, bro? We're all out of the echo. On here, no, on we now. were. Yeah, I'm hearing that. Either. But now I'm I can't hear CP. Thing. Yeah, he said, My bad, make it three. All right, y'all getting crazy. You're right. He said, We're wrapping this thing up in three. Is, is there still an echo in the chat? I don't hear an echo. <laughs> oh, oh, it's, the yeah, chat was saying they're hearing an echo, so it could be it could be Gamba's. Uh, we're good. Says we're, we're, good. Good. we're good. We're good. We're good. We're right. good. We're good. No more echo. Yeah. All right. Good. Let's get let's get to it, man. Let's get to it, man. Let's get to it, man. Oh, welcome. 
back in the building. You know what, man? You know what, man? Let me just start the show over. You're going to start the show over? We're going to start the whole show over? I'm taking it from the top, man. Here we go. 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 <laughs> Salute to Next Nation on this Saturday evening. Another edition of postseason edition of KFTV's Post Game Live presented by Underdog Fantasy, man. Go to underdogfantasy.com and uh, use our code KFTV for an instant deposit match of up to $100. Back at MSG, the world's most famous arena, man, for game one of the playoffs. All the talk was out the window. It was time to put up or shut up. And this was a tough one in the beginning, man. It was a tight, tight work by the starters. Couldn't get it going. The rims were tight. The Nova trio couldn't hit. And the process was killing us, man. 15 first half points for Joel Embiid. But after he tried to embarrass us with an alley off the glass and would go down, the deuce got loose. Bodega was in the building. And what I tell you about my man, the block nest monster was coming to play tonight. Paul Reed, you want to say what you want to say, but you got to perform. And at the end, Mitchy was just no snitchy, man. He took on the process. He took on the MVP, said, yo, this is my house. This is my house. Paul Reed, forget about it. Block nest was back. I told you about this last night. I told you he was signing off the Snapchats. No TikToks, no Rick Rocks, right, CK? No Rick Rocks. No Rick Rocks. Rock Ness was focused. <laughs> he was focused. So now, that was a great intro. But I'll say this, man. To take the game one when Captain Clutch wasn't his best, you know, Dante and, uh, and, and Brunson combining for like, what, 12 or 30-something? Mm. And he won that game. All the turnovers, the bone boneheaded turnovers. You know what I mean? Like just 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 sloppy play for by the starters all three quarters. So to get that win led by a bench, who we talked about. Somebody talked about it as being an X factor last night. You know, we covered all the bases last night uh, on uh, on the squad cast, and a lot of the, a lot of it we saw in this game. The bench being an X factor. You got the threes you needed from from my X factor, Josh Hart, as cardiac as they come. Mitch, great win, man. That's a this yeah. is, that's a great sign for this team. Is what I'm yeah. trying. It's 100%. a great sign when you can win 100%. a game like this in the playoffs, <clears throat> and our guy wasn't our guy because you know he's not going to have another bad one. He's just not. And that's what's even crazier about this game. And we won. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, mm-hmm. they ain't ready, man. You know, Steve, we talked about all that at the beginning of the show. You know, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was <laughs> I was in the middle of mayhem outside of Madison Square Garden, man. Thank God. Let's, talk, let's actually talk about that. How was that? Right. Listen, man. You know what? You know why? Like everybody asks, why does everybody hate on us so much? Mm-hmm. Because we play in the best building in the world, mm-hmm. and when we are on, it is rocking. There is no place like this in the league. Period. The players know it. That's why they want to do their best when they come here. And so that's why they hate. Everybody knows they can't see us when we play at our best, when we are at our best. This is the greatest city in the world. Like, what are we talking about? That's why we get the hate. We was out there going crazy. And and they cleared away the scaffolding. The construction looks fantastic. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, raking fans over the over the coals all these years is paying dividends for Jim Dolan as he builds a sphere and uh and has Madison Square Garden looking like like Rome. It looks fantastic outside. Okay. So so mm. anyway, now nah, the fans were going crazy, man. There's a lot of love out there, you know. Just 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 hype. Just, just yeah, hype, man. man. The building was rocking. Energy was great, you know, from from the opening announcements. And I made this joke uh after after the game during my live. I said cuz where we were at, it was it was Starks and LJ sitting on the baseline. And mm. I kid you not, Starks, he did it last year. When Starks is into it, he's on the court. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, Starks is in it like it's 94 again. He wants that redemption. Yeah. And, and he's so locked in. And so when Starks is in, the towels, everybody's going crazy with the towels. Deuce is going crazy. 
the, the, the roof the, the roof got blown off that place. Man, man. that's what's up. It's that's no place. Like, that's why they hate on us, man. You could hear it through the TV from the jump, man. Like, as soon as the first defensive possession for the Knicks, you could just hear defense chanting. And I was like, whoa. Like, you could just hear it through the TV. It was, yeah. like, shaking my walls. Like, wow. You can hear the vibrations, like, just through. First, the first heart three. It was just insane, man. The energy was yeah. popping off the screen. So I can't imagine what it was like to just be immersed in that arena tonight. The, the first heart three and the defense chance, the starting lineups was crazy. You know, obviously everybody went crazy for Jalen. OG got, got a, a pretty loud ovation. Um, it, it, it was just thundering in there. And uh, I just thought, you know, starters got tight. They weren't moving the ball as well. I thought they feared Embiid. And the guys that you wanted to take it to the basket a lot, namely Josh Hart, he got caught deer in the headlights, that playoff look that you don't like. But, you know, he, he got it done when he needed to get it done, and that was the most important thing. So they've got to figure out how to get that ball moving because the thing that I feared with them was their inability to get high percentage shots when the shots aren't falling, and we saw mm -hmm. that. Because they got a little shot happy and mm -hmm. and Jalen, his it just it just wasn't, you know, shots just weren't falling. And the the size is going to is going to bother him, but I don't think it's necessarily going to limit him. So they started with Ubre, then they went with Batum, which we had to figure. So yeah, as we've seen it, like when, like wings are gonna are gonna bother him, but I just thought he still got to his spots. He just wasn't knocking down the shots. Like a lot of his shots was kind of just rimming in and out. In crunch time, he got uh, a bucket or two that we needed. And that was that, man. But it, it was the bench, bro. It was the bench through and through. Like, Deuce coming three in. Three guys, though, CP. Just yeah. three guys. Can you imagine yeah. that? That's crazy. Yeah. Three guys. We, uh, you know, playoffs, the unlikely heroes of the playoffs, that step up. Yep. And tonight, it was, it was Deuce. It was Mitch. And it Say was it. Bodega. Yes. Bodega. Well, there you go, Steve. I'm happy that yes. you get to say both. Yes. You got to yes. witness it too in yes. person. As the as the president of the nickname commission. Yes. I gave you a block nest monster. It's being used uh around the sports world. We have we should have trademarked it. They should be paying uh the That's on you. you know, they should be paying that fee, but you know, we'll we'll let them have it. Uh we did give you guys Broadway Barrett when he was here. Shout out to our guy RJ. And on today, we will bestow upon him. Boyan Bogdanovich is officially Bodega. There you guys go. I can only imagine CP. <laughs> there it is. Nickname commissioner. Nickname commissioner. I thought you were about Bodega. to knight him for a second. Just pull out the sword. Just like Bodega. Had the rip the wrist wrapped up. Bro, you saw he was like grabbing at the wrist too after a, after some yeah. uh, after a hard foul. Yeah. yeah. They were they, they were playing a little dirty tonight. But that's Philly, man. What do you expect? Don't let me go in on Scott Foster, man. Bro. The theatrics, the I mean, some calls. Like, I didn't know what they were even looking at out there. Yeah. You know what one really bothered me was actually the Kyle Lowry three-point oh. foul where he, he extended his leg out a little bit. I'm like, ah. you could argue that he was extending his leg to get Hartenstein. I'm like, how are we not making that argument? Oh, yeah. And they went back to look to make sure that Hartenstein wasn't doing a reckless close Flagrant, out, yeah. I was like, thank God J.J. Redick on, on, the, on the broadcast said, you know, Lowry landed first, so that can't be a reckless closeout. What do we check? Yeah. And yeah. it's like, so we're not just going to talk about Lowry just extending his leg to get that foul from yeah. Arnstein. Okay, okay, fine. Yeah. Oh man, it it, it was insane. But no, like Bo with Bodega, number one, he was he knocked down his threes. He was aggressive. You know, got to his spots. He was good. He was patient. Didn't turn the ball. He had a, he had one or two. I think just uh, let me look at the box score and see. But I think he had like. Maybe one or two that that he didn't like, but overall I loved his approach. And when we did the squad cast last night, and the squad cast was popping, the reviews are, are still going crazy, man. So um, shout out to the squad cast last night because we we really went in. But the question with him was that oh, actually he, he didn't register a turnover. The question with, for him was how was Philly going to try to exploit him on defense? And there was really only one play where. That was in front of us where Kelly Oubre just kind of blew by him on the baseline and got him. But after that, he was solid. I thought his help defense was good. And, that you know, they really didn't try to exploit him that much. I didn't remember 
any time where he got switched on to Maxi. Maybe there was like one or two moments in the game, but it, they, he, he was okay. He was okay. And so he was able to deliver for the team, man. Great job by Bodega, man. Especially being out there with that second unit, man. I mean, when you have Hart, McBride, uh, Mitch, uh, OG, or even Dante out there, but tonight it was OG instead of Dante, like defensively it's going to be tough to switch because McBride will fight over a screen and he'll trail. So you're not really going to get much space anyway. But defensively, like is there anybody – that you even like it's just tough because outside of just one player if Bo if Boyan is on their weakest offensive player why would you even want that what, <laughs> like what's going to happen you know what i mean that's right that's right um when the, when it got to the third quarter man Lowry was pissing me off man because like that playoff <laughs> veteran savvy boy he was schooling the Nova 3 man he was schooling his Nova pups I, Josh Hart couldn't get no advantages over him. <laughs> that playoff savvy was just ridiculous with Lowry. He had 15 points in this game, man. Yeah. I was like, wow. Every time I try to bury this guy, he just, he had 18 points. Correction, five of nine from field, four of seven from downtown. And he was a big factor in the third. And then second half of the third, it was just Maxi. I mean, Maxi looked like his name was repeat because he kept going to the same move and killing the Knicks on the same move. The same right scoop layup, but he's a blur. And, and you know, the OG thing, he blew right past him. And so there was moments in the third quarter where you had the crowd, and me included, like, deuce. We need deuce. Get deuce in the game. And once he came in, he shut down Lowry again, bro. Shut him down again. You know, we can talk about Deuce's offense, which was much needed, but damn, his defense on Maxi was crucial because Maxi was eating everybody up. Yeah. Except for Deuce. <clears throat> yep. In in incredible. <laughs> incredible. Um, let, let's get to the phones, man. Let's get to the phones. Oh, I see him. I'm loading him up in here. Let's go to. Well, first, let's go to Machiavelli Malt 23. Machiavelli Malt 23 on the Discord. Again, I'll meet your mic. Machiavelli Malt, are you there? All right, we're not getting anything from Machiavelli Malt. Cody Glock, Cody Glock in the building. Go ahead and uh, I'll meet your mic. Here he is. Yo. Here he is. I'm on the plate. His, his name on the Discord for, for uh, full disclosure is Playoff Cody Glock. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Yo, man. Shout out Manscaped, man. I average zero turnovers because of Manscaped, man. I take care of my ball profusely with the utmost friction in my mix and no test I'm over. Talk about it. I was at the park. I was at the park today around five. Me, okay. wifey, daughter, and the dog. Nice. Maxing out. He me and baby girl. I, wait, I, 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 I can hear loud and clear. What was what's going on? Nah, here? nah. We, nah we had to mute Machiavelli, man. It's your time. It's playoff clocks there. Let's go. All right, so boom, right? Me, wifey, dog at the park. We bugging. We maxing out. We doing C is for cookie by Cookie Monster, you know. I take the <laughs> glance at my girlfriend and tap my wrist, signaling for the time. Okay. She tells me it's 554. I drop okay. everything, took the dog because that's who was closest to me. Get into the crib, ready to watch the game one. Yes. I ain't want nobody talking to me, nobody calling me. My my daughter came back 30 minutes after down the crib. She was trying to make me read a kid book to her. I just stared at her with the Embiid face that he had on the floor when he was injured. I stared at her with that face. So nothing mattered tonight. First and foremost, my game ball goes to Deuce. Mm -hmm, tonight, mm -hmm. no dinner. My game ball goes to Deuce. Yeah. It looks like we kept the right little thun. We kept yeah. the right little thun. Proud is an understatement. Tonight, Deuce mm -hmm. had Brunson's back like never before. Josh Hart was shaking the first three quarters. Yeah. Then he put the X in X factor in the fourth quarter, capping us to victory tonight. Yeah. Getting yeah. all the hustle boards, free throw line extended, wherever. Yo, CP, yeah. say his name one more time. Yeah. Say his name, and it, it starts with Omega. <laughs> Omega <laughs> looked like a professional out there. Yeah. Like yeah. he's been like he's been there before. The for moment sure. wasn't too big for any of those players out there tonight. Yeah. But the moment 
was dominated by someone tonight. If I could curse Let's right talk now, about it. Me, Let's talk about it. Believe me. Let's believe go. Believe me, if I could curse right now, I would. Let me tell <laughs> you something about Mitchie. Let's because go. You see Mitchie? You see Mitchie? Mitchie ain't no damn snitchy. I told y'all, if Mitchie even has half a good of his, a game tonight, yeah. it, I was going to wild out. The clubs are on. No diddler. Whoever's in charge of the graphics, pull up that damn communist right now. Pull up them jail bars with the aviator shades right now. Paul Reed, you want to talk tough? Get that Joke. princess jump out of here. Joke. Joke. Now, when Mitch lie in the streets, when Mitch lie in it's the over streets, with. Joel and B, Joel and B try to elbow him. Yeah. Joel and B try to chin check him. Yeah. Yeah. Ball to tap him too. Him. No yeah, ball. yeah, balls. Yeah, you got him. Mitch was not going anywhere tonight. Yeah. When my center come out, he coming out five plus offensive rebounds. He coming out two clutch free throws. He coming out jump ball. Yeah. Hustle, Mitch. If you ain't talking, if I hear anybody talking hot about Mitch, if I hear any slander after this game, I'm beating their ass. Shout mm. out to Nikki Pipes, man. Let's Shout go. CB free throws, man. Yeah. Shout I made mine. I made mine. Yeah, I, I I I know you you got to. It's the playoffs. Shout yeah, out playoffs. Snitsky. Shout out Alex and my Jamaicans. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah. Shout out Snitsky. Shout out what I had in my lungs all day today. Shout out the Quiver. It, 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 it is four twenty. It is four twenty. Jay Boogie, we need to hear you, Jay Boogie. Let's go. Where's the salute, boogie man. at, man? Lusa, Lusa, Call us up, I'm yo. Up, and the phone lines are up six five seven three eight three one five zero nine. Call us up. Load it up. Load up the Discord, man. We are on and popping right now. Next post game live. The Glocks there's going off. Throw some fives in the chat right now. Playoff Cody Glock. Yo. Yo. <laughs> the Block Nest Monster was playing no Taz. games Shout tonight. Taz from Monday Night Raw. Oh, yeah. Taz was my guy. Taz was my guy, man. I'm out. I thought you said shout out to Kaz. Kaz was outside. Outside of MSG in the melee, there's a lot of love, man. It was a lot. Watch party went crazy. I heard the watch party was bananas when when uh, uh Josh Hart and OG hit their threes. I heard the watch party went went through the roof, packed out. So shout out to everybody. You got footage? Was... You got footage of that? I wasn't there. I was. I mean, I mean, but like, is any was oh, yeah. anyone filming? I gotta oh, go bet. do so much footage. Any of the watch parties? Perfect. Hopefully, for all of them. I was Perfect. yeah 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 I was locked in on the game man and then Perfect. I was outside so I got to lock in on the on the uh, footage. That's gonna be this. dope. That's gonna be yeah. Dope. Whatever anybody tagged me in, but yeah. Black market base side in Miami. I had people tell me, "Yo, we got to set up watch parties in Orlando. We got to go to H Town. So <laughs> got to carve it out. We 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 have to carve it out, man. The A we got to set up shop in the A. But yeah. That's uh, we'll, we'll we'll get to it, man. But great win, absolutely great win, man. Like, let's take a look at the box score. And the box score tonight brought to you guys by Underdog Fantasy, man. Um, Nick shot the ball thirty nine percent from the field. It was a rough go, especially in the uh, first half. Um, but Philly, conversely, man, like the process w- was just getting his shots going, and he was really the full all of the Philly offense, especially in in most of that first half. Uh, Knicks did shoot the ball 45% from three, which was clutch. That was uh, obviously Deuce, Josh Hart later in the game. Uh, OG hit that clutch one, so that was a good sign for them. 82% from the free throw line, not good enough. Got to clean that up. Jalen and Josh missed a couple. Uh, Got to hit it, but hey, how about Mitch? Mitch made his two. When it matters. Both of them. Two. I'm Both knocking of those them. down. I'm knocking those down. Yo, Both my, of them. my guy was in his bag, man. He was in his bag tonight. Playoff ready. Like Cody Glock said, everybody stepped up in the moment, especially your role players, and that's key to do at home. Uh, rebounding battle. How about this, man? 55 to 33. Talk about it. Major. Talk about the offensive yeah, rebounds. Yeah, that's us. We have to. We need it. 23 to 9. 23 to 9. Yep. And we're gonna like that's gonna continue. Like, yep. that's not an aberration. That is gonna be a trend in this series. Yep. We're gonna be able to dominate the boards. We're gonna Look. be able to dominate the boards. It took 23 offensive boards to help the Knicks win by seven points. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Now, Brunson doesn't have back-to-back bad games. Does if you not. get Dante knocking down, if you get Dante knocking down shots, man. Yeah, yeah, that's going to go down. 
Because not not to get on the grab off the off the rim, right? Yeah, but look, those guys yeah. both need to turn it up offensively in game two, man. Yeah. Because yeah. And, and just to think about from the Philly side, man, I said this earlier in the show, like Embiid still got what he he does. He still went to the free throw line. Dang. He got twelve shot attempts from the free throw line. So even though he got injured and wasn't playing his complete game, which is working the post and working the paint. <laughs> He still got to the free throw line. He still got 29 points. Even at the fact that he had him dangerous, right? Maxi had 33 and yet they still didn't have enough to win. Yeah. That's not looking good yeah. for Philly. Yeah, I don't care no what one you else help. They had no help from everybody. Yeah. Buddy Hill didn't exist. Nah. Tobias Harris didn't exist. Like great defense from Kelly Oubre. He didn't exist. But Toom had that one moment. He had a three. He didn't exist. So yeah, like that's what we were saying. Like, you got to get the others to help him out. Like, we know Max is going to do what Max is. He's, he had a big step this big season. Step. Yeah. And yeah. we know Joel and B, like, this dude is hobbled 50% and still went out there and had 15 of their 34 in the first quarter and had a good night. You know what I mean? But where is everyone else going to fit in? And I think that's, that's going to be the key for us if we have our three guys off the bench going out there and whooping their tail. Deuce McBride in his first real playoff game doing his thing, step backs. We yeah. talked about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, Bodega, y'all, Connell, I'm still sticking to middle-aged Luca out there making it look easy, getting buckets. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, we got the depth, and it showed tonight. And our our main guy, he ain't even look good. He Dante DiVincenzo, look good. he didn't do he nothing. Didn't so, good. it's going to be it, – look, man, yeah. that's why the whiteboard says what the whiteboard says. Knicks that's and five. It. Um, uh, this battle, the Knicks 120-17, to 17, which was good. You had the but the turnovers, turnovers killed us, man. Yes. 12 Nick turnovers led to 21 six of points, 21 six of points, and just just careless turnovers. You just have to be a lot more sharper, especially in the playoffs. But uh, fast break points was pretty impressive, man. 27 fast break points to 11. Um, so that was a great job there by this Knicks team. 36 points in the paint to 46. I, like I said, I thought the starters feared and beat a little too much. They should have challenged him a lot more. Once Josh Hart got that one. And then flexed on him like the the whole garden erupted. It was kind of like just uh, you know just like a finally type of eruption in the garden. Like yo, come on, man. So you know they they have to be willing to take a risk and not let him just sit there and get comfortable. Because if you do, then you're not going to have the opportunities to uh, spray it out to wide open plays. Instead, they they're going to be taking a lot of contested shots. And I thought that's what happened with the starters. They couldn't really generate those looks, but once, once Bodega, once Deuce got in there, you saw the ball movement. It was zipping around. Then they were able to get open shots. And CK, I, th- I thought you hit it on the money, especially in terms of uh, Deuce. It, it wasn't, you know, his 21 points wasn't just catch and shoot. This was Deuce making it happen. Yeah. Creating. Creating for himself. Creating for others. Four assists off the bench for Deuce. It's good production, man. 21 points. Like... He did everything, and this is the playoffs. That was a great sign. A yeah. great sign, bro. Yep. I-, I loved it, man. I-, I loved his effort, man. Yeah, man. First I mean, game. the one thing I'll say, though, like from a Knicks standpoint, yeah. you got to test and bead more, especially on that knee, and I didn't think they did that enough tonight, especially in the second half. Yeah. Like the one play, and I tweeted this out, you had Dante DiVincenzo – Attacking baseline, Maxi was trailing. He sees Embiid in the paint, boxing out uh, Mitch. But yet Dante decided to try to make like a bounce pass or just pass it off to Mitch somehow in some fashion. And it was a steal by Embiid and went the other direction for a uh, Philly score. I'm like, yo, you just just attack Embiid. He's not going to test that knee. See yeah. if he's willing to jump. See if he's willing to be a rim protector. Because I just don't think he's going to want to take that take that attempt, especially mentally, you got to think for him as an athlete, he tried to do that put back dunk, that self put back dunk. You see him grimacing. He falls because you, he felt that knee tweak. Yeah. And if there's anything for an athlete, if they don't, if they know they don't, they're not physically healthy, mentally, it's going to cause a roadblock. They're going to have to think twice about any movement they make while they play. So for Embiid, I need to see the Knicks attack him more often. Get him out. like he was sagging into the paint because they knew if he went out to the perimeter, that was just going to be easy in a switch all day long. So they yeah. got to test the man. If he's going to be sagging off that much uh, while he- for hedging and just parking in the paint, 
Test it, man. See if he's going to be that rim protector. Yeah. No, no, no question about it, man. So to everybody in the chat, once again, hit that thumbs up button for you boys. Uh, let me load some people here up on the Discord. <laughs> let me get uh, Machiavelli Matt. Machiavelli Matt, 23. When you can hear us, go ahead and unmute your mic. Yeah, but let's go. Let's switch transition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Machiavelli Mac. Let's go. I'll meet your mic. I'm bringing JD in. Yeah, that's all right. That's, that's okay. Machiavelli Mac. I had no mute your mic. All right. I don't, I don't got Machiavelli Mac. Okay, Rambo, Rambo. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all already know. Hey, shout out first off, TK. 2K. That's I had to get that corrected off for it. <laughs> but my God, let's. Oh, I'm gonna set it right now, TP. Excuse let's me. go. You no, know, I'm turn drinking. up. Turn up time. Let's go. I don't want to turn up. I don't want to turn up, man. It's a lot of unfinished business, bro. It's okay, just one go. game. We're not bing bogging today. We're not doing none of that. We just, but we all hype. I told y'all, okay. Y'all seen my son out there, man. Shout out to Deuce. I'm going to be real sad. The only person I really wanted to hear from tonight, I already heard from him. Cody Glock, man. Shout out to him. Okay? Because because he because he spent time. He, he he prioritized the family first. And I did the same thing. I took my son to the movies today. And I mm. got hyped. I want to see the, the Godzilla and King Kong been beating my chest all game. Let's Stop go. Stop playing with me, man. Let's go. All right. Let me relax. Let me, let me calm down. Let me calm down. <laughs> we still got three more games. We still got three more games in this series. We still got 15 more games in, in, in the playoffs. Okay, so we're gonna relax, okay? We're gonna we're gonna take a peel back real quick. All right. I got wifey right here. She's waiting for her massage because I'm gonna give it to her. Mm -hmm. But you know what? She let me watch the game. She let me do everything I needed to do right now. She's looking at me with a smile right now. And I know because the Knicks won. Let's go. Bro, listen, Deuce, bro. Deuce, he went off today, bro. I love that for Deuce, bro. Anybody calling themselves the Deuce President Hive and this, this, and that, refer back to episode 355. Okay, I've been called. <laughs> oh, oh, man, he got it, Mike, man. He got his episode documented. Wow. Receive. Let's go. Refer back to episode 355, okay? Let's go. Uh, Let's I've go. Been loving Deuce. I've been loving what he's gotten right now. Jalen Brunson, you know what? I, I I love the aggression today. I, I love how you deterred the offense and they was paying so much attention to you and all this, this and that. And you still had a bad night. And it's oh my God, everything was so beautiful tonight, bro. Everything was so beautiful. I'm not like I can't I can't even talk right because my wife's looking at me. Usually, you know, I'm hiding in the closet. Yeah, this is the first time she gave she gave me the A-OK. -okay. I'm looking at her in the eyes, bro. <laughs> we, we, we in the game right now, bro. I'm gonna catch y'all on Monday, man. Salute to all of you guys. Salute to, to Cody Glock, bro. Let's go. You, bro. It was Rambo. Rambo tapping out, man. T tapping out. He was using his outside voice indoors, so you know yeah, he, he was. was uh, he man. Oh. Yeah, here, here we go, man. All right, so we got the squad cast back on. And look who showed up. Hang on. Hold on. Hold on. Let me see. Is <laughs> Playoff game one. Mr. Sports Talk in the building. That's how you came through? Yeah, I ain't even see you in the building tonight. I Dang. My wow. man was, my man was wow. courtside. My man was courtside with straight hand and, um, and, 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 and talk. Mr. Sports Talk, how are you, sir, man? What's going on, man? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was talking to Juan Soto. But, oh, you did that with Soto? Wow. That? Juan you Soto. With Soto. <laughs> Let's go. Yankees Let's go, uh, man. uh straight hand, Tracy Morgan. Oh, it was it was a, it was crazy in there. The whole family was in there, man. Shout, shout out to there. Shout out to you. Shout out to you for them tickets. Shout out to you. Shout oh, out to you. Man, 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 man. man, 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 man. Bro. Yes, bro, sir. The, the the garden was electric, man. It was it was it was electric and what what a game. I think this was the best way it could have happened. And you might think, JD, what are you talking about? Jalen Brunson went eight for 20, whatever. And how can this be the way that you want to script? I mean, I'm not going to say that's the way I wanted it scripted. However, yeah. for a team to handle adversity, game one after a week off, and you already are down 32 19. Tom, Thomas Thibodeau makes a substitution at the end of the first quarter, the Miles McBride, the crowd starting to get nervous. I'm starting to think, uh oh. 
32-19. Got a minute left in the first quarter. You know how this goes in the NBA. We miss a shot. They hit a three. Boom, you're down 15. From there, who knows what could happen in this game. Did you see the Minnesota Timberwolves game? That was a blowout. And mm. so the Orlando game, that was pretty much a blowout. I, I yep. missed every game tonight. I don't even know what happened. In you any, didn't miss much. Didn't I miss didn't nothing. see any game tonight. Lake you is now uh, down by double digits. So mm. when you're down like that, anything can happen. He makes a substitution and Deuce makes the first three, literally the next possession. And just that 32 to 22, just cutting it down to 10, the crowd exhaled a little bit. And we said, okay, let's see how we respond in the second quarter. And I tell you, for this <clears> team <throat> to come out of a win in game one of a series where they know a lot of people have the Sixers winning, and you win it with contributions from your bench, with contributions. And, and shout out to our stream last night. Literally, all the candidates we had as players that were like, yo, you know, Mitch, what is Mitch going to look like with without his conditioning? Is this week off a good thing for Mitch? Or is it going to be a negative? Because he actually needs to be out there. Yeah. Well, it looked like the week is what he needed to be, you know, he needed nice. off was the yeah. week. Miles yeah. McBride, we talked about this is the first time Miles McBride is going through this experience as a rotation player. Did you guys see how, how Emmanuel quickly looked against the Cavaliers? Did mm. you guys see how Quentin Grimes looked against the Cleveland Cavaliers? Yeah. Where they, they, they didn't even want to touch the basketball. So that was a question mark. Bojan Bogdanovic, up and down after the trade. What is he going to look like against a Sixers matchup in the playoffs? Everybody that was literally almost a question mark came through. Came through. In game one, CP. So to handle adversity in game one, not to do it in game six, you got punched in the mouth in game one. And for you to respond this way, this team now, you could say what you want. Number two seed, they were supposed to win game one. Blah, miss me with all that. For them to win the way they did as a team, as a unit, they have to have so much confidence in the event that this happens again. In other words, if Brunson struggles again, he's not struggling in game six. And then everybody's starstruck because you don't know, uh-oh, who do we yeah. go to? We already responded to game one. So in game five, in game four, in game six, if this happens again, these guys will have the confidence to come through. And to me, that was the most great encouraging test. sign out of the whole game tonight. It was it was a great test, man. Well said. Well, well said. They they handled that adversity and, and the bench really led the way. I, I just I don't expect another bad game from Brunson. And I think the starters will, will make their adjustments. The thing is with, with Philly, like they can make all the adjustments they want. The process ain't getting healthier because what I saw right in front of us when he collapsed like that, and that self alley was kind of crazy. Everybody's like, damn, that was dirty. But when he collapsed like that, I didn't think he was coming back. To see him come back in the third, I was like, yeah, that's that playoff pressure. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, I tweeted, Deuce that's said, that, yo, what playoffs? Playoffs? Wait, bro. What playoffs? That's yeah, what Deuce said yeah. today. What playoffs? Dude, Deuce was in there like it was like he was in the That's what I'm saying, bro. That was that was, that was G League Deuce out yeah. there. It was easy that was, for that him, was man. 30 point G League Deuce out there just yeah. mixing them up. Like he did not care who was in front of him. That's what I'm saying. It was an opportunity. Yeah. He was making the offense, man. That dude crossed up Maxie at the top of Yo, the uh the key. Mixing, bro, when he did layup. that, I was like, he what? Was mixing nah, he up. created. Yeah, step back three, looking like James Harden. Like it's just he was doing his thing, man. It oh, was that, and it was comfortable that in was, the garden. That, yeah, Pressure, celebrities. You named all the celebrities are in the front row. Like and Deuce oh, said, "Cool, <laughs> wins game two. Like you know what I mean? Like not an empty seat in the house. Come and on, man. Deuce was in there like he was C just in Westchester, empty gym. Like all right, CP. I'm so so proud of Mitch today, man. So proud of Mitch. He's dealt with so much." He lost his starting job. He just got paid. You know, we didn't even know if he was going to come back. The initial reports was he's out for the season. The Knicks even had to apply for some type of exception. And the guy comes back, needs some time to get his conditioning right. Yeah. He, he knows personally, man, I started this season as a potential defensive player of the year candidate. And then the injury comes after. That's not easy to handle. 
you've seen some of the tweets he's had and he's even talked about mental health and how, you know, yeah, he yeah. needs to get right. And yeah. I understand he had the week off, but bro, I don't care how much time you got off. You come back and you have to play Joel Embiid, seven feet, 280 pounds. Some of those drives, he went right at, right at Mitch. <laughs> One of them, he hit Mitch somewhere. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I was like, saying, yeah, and, yeah. And that's how good Mitch was. Because mm -hmm. he had to try to kick him in the nuts to try to get separation. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. how frustrated Mitch had him when mm -hmm. he was out there. And, and he, he got was a standing ovation coming out in the first half. It was well-deserved for him, man. Great yeah. job. He, he was so locked in that even on the reps that he had against Embiid, where Embiid got the best of him, he did not allow that to dictate the next possession against at Embiid. At I mean, he, 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 was, he was one of the MVPs tonight. And listen, it's friendly fire with, with Isaiah Hartenstein. He hears it. You know, this guy should be the starting center of the future. Yep. Mitch is like, listen, that's my boy. I, you know, Hartenstein's my boy, but you might you guys must have forgot who was who, mm. who I was on the other side of the court. Oh, yeah. And shout out, shout out to Tiz for trusting him in the fourth quarter Where's and it? disregarding this whole spacing and all this stuff. When Mitch is on, bro, it it it, it just it deletes the other side of the court sometimes. Yeah. And how about them two free throws? The guard was going crazy when he had I'm those two. I'm knocking those down. I'm knocking those down. Yeah, man. I told you, you know what's crazy? Covered with the heat, man. Mm. What's crazy is that his this is his first game playing 30 minutes back because he was on a minutes restriction. Mm. Yeah. And to only have three yes. fouls. Yes. Some of them are very questionable, by the way, where it's like, word? Two, two of them, yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. So it's like 100%. he really, he should have ended the game with one foul. But 30 minutes, first time going against Joel Embiid and making Embiid work, man, and getting blocked shots too. Embiid was and, getting and frustrated, man. And, and Elbow. Sh shout out, shout out to Tibbs and the coaching staff. Uh, Isaiah Hartenstein did say in a press conference early in the week that they're going to work on keeping hands up, being disciplined in terms of not, you know, reaching too much on Joel Embiid. And the thing with Mitch is Mitch is also seven feet. And you saw many times Joel Embiid got the ball at center court by the free throw line. He tried to get Mitch to kind of hesitate. He did right. a lot of pump fakes. He did a lot of yeah. stutter step dribbles. And Mitch was not biting. Didn't so bite on any of them. He confused Embiid on a few possessions where Embiid didn't know if he wanted to drive or shoot. It was so bad he had to throw one off the backboard and he almost killed himself. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> so he, shout out to Mitch for being disciplined on defense. Yeah. Yeah, you know that's his only dunk that he has since coming back from the injury. Wow! And then it turned out it turned, he, he he hurt his knee on his only dunk since coming he back looks, from the injury. He, he look he looks bad. And yeah, man. I'll say I, that. I think they need to they need to really like gauge whether this is worth it for him. That's what I'm saying. They got to stop him from himself. I don't. There's you know, so many not times. Doctor, but when I saw him yeah. collapse like that, I was like, I was like, this is like Grand Hill ankle playoff type of thing. Like, yeah, this yeah. could be bad. You know, they they need to tread lightly with that. And the thing is that he's only dunked 19 times on the season. So mm. it's not like this is a guy who likes – because he knows, like, he knows the amount of pressure it takes to weigh 285, be 7'2 guy, and then to put that all on your joints? Yeah. Nah, man. Insane. And for him to even do that today, I was a little shocked. I mean, even for me, I was like, I get what you're doing there. It's a good play. Mm -hmm. But is that really the play you want to do right now, especially coming back from – surgery on your knee like you're working your way back like i didn't think he like sick play but i didn't think it was a smart yeah. play in that moment i thought like you know we, you, he was fine without having to play like that he was fine just playing the ground game man shout out to the nick fan base at the garden cp you yeah. were there when yeah. mb yeah. got hurt the crowd actually wanted him to get up and get yeah. and, you know and and be all right and get into there was the a game. silence man there yeah. was like a worried silence in the air man because it was like bro like he literally just dropped down, was grabbing his knee. The whole Sixer bench left and was crowded around him. Everybody was concerned because it looked that bad. So to see him come back in a third, it was like, damn, that's crazy. Surprise, but yeah. You saw how yeah. he played. He, he was less aggressive. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in the first half, he was getting his points in that low box. He was dominating Nyhart there. And Mitch was trying his best to hold him down there. And, and sometimes the MB was just getting able to get easy baskets. That's yeah. the MVP. But after that, he was a jump shooter. And if he's going to be a jump shooter for the rest of the series, that's it's advantage over. Knicks we because of the fact that you have two seven-footers, but Mitch more so than Hartenstein. Yo, 
it's hard to shoot jump shots over Mitch because Mitch yeah. could test at the highest point. Yeah. Yep. And if you don't create separation on Mitch, he's going to tip the basketball or yeah. he's going to alter your jump shot. And he did that to Embiid a lot of times where Embiid tried to get a jump shot. You saw it was short. Part of that could have been his knee as well. But also it's the fact that, you know, Mitch being a seven footer contesting a shot, it, it's hard to get sometimes some jump shots over Mitch. You see how many times Mitch Indeed. blocks perimeter shots as, as at, at that. True indeed. Let me hit let me hit the reset to, to salute all the people in the chat, man. Knicks Nation salute. Salute to everybody in the chat. Hit that thumbs up button for you, boys. The squad cast is back on the mic. Game one victory. Game one to the good guys. 111 and 104. Knicks get the win over the Sixers, man. Throw an emoji in the chat. Let us know how you guys are feeling. There was a jubilant Knicks crowd outside of MSG, inside of MSG. It was rocking tonight. Trust and believe. Gus and Clyde, I heard, killed it tonight. I didn't even realize that Gus was on the call until I was walking around, and in the rotunda, I heard him on, on, the, uh, on, on the call. So, great job to have Gus Johnson back calling playoff basketball alongside Clyde. Um, let me see some more Super Chats that came in. Five out Super Chat from uh, girly 76 C it says, uh, I, I am a freak and why says shout out heart, the energizer bunny deuce. What more can I say? Offense, defense, a one Mitchie held it down. Bogey thumbs up. Let's go Knicks, man. Yes, absolutely. Everybody in, in the chat, throw an emoji in the chat. Let us know how you guys are feeling. And for my franchise channel members, you got the squad cast in here, throw a, uh, a CP, a JD, CK, Alex, emojis in the chat let us know that you guys are in here as well man the family was out here and you know outside of the garden it, it was just a lot of love a lot of fans talking about like you know when the channel started we we was in the basement and, and now it's, it's, it's more playoff victories more playoff appearances and it, it's the sky's looking up it's, it's looking up for us right now man so it was just a great night shout out to larry medina in the chat i see my guy larry all right, real quick, before we get to the calls, we're going to load some more calls up. Uh, let's take care of some bills. Let's get to our sponsors of the night. Starting off with uh, Manscaped, fellas. You know the deal, man. This episode is brought to you by the Spring Cleaning Champions, Manscaped. This season, make sure to groom your carpets and the drapes with the leaders in below the waist grooming, man. Clear out the winter bush with Manscaped. Lawn Mower 5.0. And watch your confidence bloom like the springtime flowers, man. Embrace the season and join the 10 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with our special offer. Go to manscaped.com and use our code KFTV for 20% off plus free shipping. Also, man, remember, April is Testicular Cancer Awareness Month, fellas. So, you know, make sure no matter what the age, make sure you know what to do to uh, just check, check yourself out. And, and make sure that, that everything is copacetic there. So make sure that you don't forget that and, and take care of your family jewels, man. You can take care of it uh, cosmetically with Manscaped. And also, remember that is it is Testicular Cancer Awareness Month as well. So manscaped.com, promo code KFTV for 20% off plus free shipping. All right, let's load some people up. Let's load some people up on the Discord. Uh, let me see. Let's see here. Mm-hmm. Seven seven four seven seven four. What's your name? Where are you calling in from? Seven seven four. How you doing? How you doing? I apologize. Apologize for the delay. Guys. Hey, okay, yeah, it's all right, man. We, it's a game one victory, man. Do your thing. We here. Okay, so great victory, nonetheless. I I, I have to say I was concerned with the offense. Yeah. In the fourth quarter, I'm seeing a lot of standing and watching. Yeah. I'm seeing a lot of guys who are not primary uh, ISO scorers. McBride, to me, great first game. He's a mm-hmm. catching suit guy. Yeah. Josh Hart, he hit some big threes. We can't trust him to hit double clutch three pointers down the stretch. So, yeah. Tibbs, that's my guy. He's mm-hmm. ironclad. So, we went with that final group for basically the entire fourth quarter. We didn't see DiVincenzo get back into the game. We didn't see Hartson get back in the game. Yeah. We didn't see Bodega get back in the game. That's okay. Nonetheless, I need more from Tibbs in terms of scheming things up rather than just giving the ball to Jalen Brunson and going one four flat and relying on him to kind of make a move. So, I thought great win. They ground the Sixers down. You saw that Embiid, he got tired. Mitchell Robinson getting that offensive rebound, wearing him down. But nonetheless, you know, offensively, this has been a theme 
Tib, I need you to, to, to strategize and, and pull some of those strings, you know, like a puppet master, yeah. rather than just having Brunson go out there and just kind of say, make a play. DP, I saw you at the Garden for the first part of the YouTube Live. The Let's energy go. is crazy. Very exciting for the Knicks right now. Sorry for the delay. Thanks for taking the call. Nah, no problem, man. No problem, man. Call back anytime. Um, the, the electricity, you you could feel it from the opening moments. JD, what, what, was the vantage, what was it like from your vantage point, man? It was yo, it was it was wild, man. Like the, the the crowd, I got there a little bit, a little bit earlier. Was able to see the uh, the national anthem, the the yeah. player introductions. Um, the crowd was 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 electric, man. I had people around me going crazy. Um, it, it was it was an amazing, like you know, you see it on TV when you blast your volume and you hear the defense, but to hear it in person. And it, 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 it's 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 wild. Like they they were yelling, "Let's go Knicks!" They were yelling everything before the players were even going out on the court to start their yeah. practice. Yeah. Like when I saw that, I said, "Oh man, this is gonna be this team gives us a reason to cheer. It's gonna be a great night." So it was we were, definitely electric, bro. We were trying to, um, you know, we had left sucker punch. We we had stopped at a watch party first. And, you know, I had to go in there, link, you know, check in with Eric and check in with the fans and whatnot, just just make sure everybody was good. Sucker Punch was, it was already starting to get packed. That, that This was at like five o'clock. Game time was six o'clock. So Eric was in there doing his thing. But we had to get from 25th and 3rd to Park somewhere close to the garden. And we left around like, you know, 520 and didn't get to the garden until about six. But luckily, the Minnesota and Suns game was taking long. So by yeah, the time we, they announced by the time it. we parked, it was still eight minutes left. So I was like, yo, great. We got mad time. So we was in there, able to get in there and get settled and everything and, and catch the vibe before the game started. So and they announced the delay at the Garden where the Knicks game was supposed to be like around 605, 608-ish. Right, right. And it didn't start to like 623, 625. Yeah, so. yeah. That 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 helped out a lot. And it's also great in terms of the channel, man. Like, you know, I'm walking around. I took a few pictures. Shout out to the Nick and Ada. Uh, many people. Yeah. Uh, Nick I think the guy. I saw Nick and Ada too, man. Yeah, to you Nick. can't miss him. He's like, yeah, he's him you all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I saw yeah. Tony out there. I saw a lot of, you know, big Nick fans. I Even the guy that wants to set the thing up with you in Orlando, he popped up, yeah. took a yeah, flight. Yeah, yeah, my guy. But yeah, yo. Yeah, he, he, he took a flight here and to see like how many fans stop you, you know, salute you, shout out Knicks fan TV. It's, 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 it's great. Man. Yeah, so man. that added, you know, that added to the moment today and yeah, to the experience yeah. for sure. Shout out to Jake, Jake has you, you and Jake was in the building in, in tonight, man. What was my guy Jake talking about, man? Oh, J Jake was talking about everything. He was talking about the Islanders, the Jets, the <laughs> Knicks. <laughs> you know, Jake, hey, Jake, Jake is telling me. radio show right now. Hey, he's giving me his ESPN radio show schedule for the draft. He's, he's already, <laughs> he's freaking out because, you know, you got the draft in game three. So he, oh, he's not, okay. yeah, he's yeah. like, yo, JD, what, how should I manage this? Because, you know, you, you I got the Jets at pick, pick number 10, but then there's yeah. like game three in Philly. Like, it, it, it was a, a fun and interesting experience with Jake. So, shout out to Jake shout for out sure. To Jake. Shout out to Jake, man. Make sure you guys are checking in with Jake Asman. Uh, as if you're a Jets fan, for sure. But if you're just a sports fan overall, man, shout out to Jake Asman. And Check Jake has the Jake plug. Asman. He showed me his little badge. He had the media pass and everything. Oh, yeah. He's tapped in. Jake is tapped in. He, he's he's yeah. tapped in, bro. Absolutely. Yo, ESPN Absolutely. New York Radio, man. He's yeah. doing big things, radio, man. He's doing man. big things. Yep. Shout, shout out to our guy, Jake Asman. For you Jets fans and Jazz fans, make sure you tap in next weekend with him as well. Uh, Billy R23, turned out Super Chat says, Nick's up 1-0, and oh, but yo, CP, shout out to shout out to CP for being at the Garden and making it back for post game instead of staying at the after party festivities. Now, we, stay, we stayed for the whole entire thing. We was out there for the whole thing, um, and NYPD let us chill for a little while, and then after a while, they had to clear out, but we, we got more than enough time in at the after party, and it was a good time. Everybody had a great time and, and then went home okay. Uh, shout out to uh, the 77 uh, two dollar super chat to CP and Alex wanted to trade everything for injury <laughs> MB. Nah, that must be Robert Randolph's uh, uh, burner account. Okay, salute, salute. Okay, all right. Let's see who's on the on the Discord. Let's go to J Cal. J Cal locked in right now. Go ahead and unmute let's your mic. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I mean, listen. It was messy. It yeah. was gritty. It was thrilling and. There's a lot of heroes. If you told me 
Brunson and Dante were eleven for thirty six, and we beat, we beat them. Yeah, I'd be like, impossible, impossible. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But you got to remember how deep this team is. True, true, true. This team is deep, and Mitchy no snitchy. Mitchy, whoa. You got to start there. I mean, I know there's a lot of Embiid storylines here. We'll get to it. But I just want to talk about our guys. Mitchy no snitchy. I mean, we forgot how great he was. Do you remember how great the start of the season was? And he wasn't that great, but he was so good. He just mucks it up. When he's in there with Embiid and they're entangled, you could see Embiid is working. And it's awkward. It's messy. You know, it's like 90s basketball. And then you watch what, like, Hartenstein was giving him a pass. Like, Hartenstein could, couldn't stop Embiid at all. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, picking up the two fouls wasn't, uh, wasn't ideal. And then OG also. So you could add that on top of Brunson not having his best offensive game and DiVincenzo. OG picking up his two fouls. It limited his offense, his, his aggressiveness in the first half. And then second half, you know, being on the, the maxi matchup, it, it was tough for him. So he, he was kind of neutralized a lot in, in this game, but I don't expect that over the course of the series. Yeah, I mean, the three, you start to realize just how important three-pointers are. I mean, we shot 45% tonight? Yeah. 40%? Yeah. I mean, it was, that's ridiculous. Yeah. We're, we're a 35, 36%. I think we're like middle of the pack. To, mm-hmm. to hit that, mm-hmm. incredible. And that's pretty much the story of the game, even though there's all these other amazing storylines. Yeah. Shout out to McBride, obviously. I mean, for Deuce to come in here and look like so confident in a playoff game, like playoff McBride, playoff bro. Deuce. I mean, that this could be a thing. Deuce, I mean, Deuce played like a killer tonight, J.K. Bro. You've seen many playoff games. Yes. He played like I mean, a killer tonight. Dog. There was no stage fright. Dog. Zero stage fright. Dog. He's, he's like, I'm just going to shoot the three. Give me they the They were chanting Deuce. We want Deuce. And when Maxi was cooking in that third quarter, yeah, you heard we want Deuce, we want Deuce, and that's what happened. Tip said, "Yo, Dante Inferno, Monday, we'll save you for Monday. Deuce, we need you right now. You got to yeah. save this game. They needed this win. You could not let this. This would have been a tremendous letdown if they would have let Aunt Philly win this game. Yeah. You can't have absolutely. that. Absolutely, absolutely. And it, you know, Brunton had a tough game, but I, I don't know yeah. who pointed it out. It probably was Alex." Uh, by the way, great job, Alex, kicking off the show. Um, it, he's not going to have two bad games. In a no, row. he'll be back. You mm-hmm. know, and mm-hmm. they were throwing a lot at him. They were playing him very physical. Yeah, but I just want to wrap on Embiid. He's not right. Mm-mm. This is something seriously wrong with him. Absolutely. And I know it looked like he was invincible for the first three or four plays. He's getting in ones. He's hitting threes. It looks like he's going to do everything. And then he does this, you know, which in hindsight. Doing this like showboating play where you throw it up against the backboard and you do this like, you know, dunk. That's a, he should not be playing that kind of game yeah. right now. Yeah. I, and I just thought, oh my Doesn't God. Doesn't look so right. bad for him. Does not look it right. Doesn't, he, what is he? What do you think? He's 80%, 60%? If that. Not right. If that. I don't even know. If that. And if so that. that I just want to point out how crazy the, the team over there when they're thinking, because I'm sure Embiid wanted to play the second half. Why would you play him in the second half? It's a seven game series. Yeah. Yeah. Like just let him, you know, uh let him rest. Yeah. Give him the night off. What what if he came out there and like blew his knee out? And I I, I, really well, I, I wonder, over. you know, like none of us being like orthopedists, I wonder what the advice they're getting from the medical staff that this guy keeps getting cleared because yeah. it looks to us, you know, the the civilians here that like Something is just not right here. Somehow he just kept getting, oh, okay, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I don't know, man. I, I think it's situational. You know, I, I hear all the, uh, you know, the sports talk. Yeah. Uh, these people don't watch the games, the, the non-fans, but they mm-hmm. got a lot yeah. of opinions. Uh, yeah. You know, they steal our nicknames. You, you know, I'm talking, you know, these people. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, and they're like, oh, well, this is their perfect opportunity because they can roll through the Knicks, no problem. They did the right thing by getting the seed they got. I mean, hold on a second. Time out. How are they going to roll through the Knicks again? Explain to me how you're going to roll through the Knicks because yeah. I, I think we played them in the regular season and we did quite well. Smoked them. Yep. Smoked we them. smoked them. Yeah. So it's still Knicks and six. Get him beat off the floor. Let's go. Because he wants to be a Nick anyway. And I guess oh, I'll we don't want him. That. No, no, no. We don't want him. But now we don't want him now no, because no. 
he he's not going to make it through a season. Yeah. But I mean, for the for his career, I, I just doesn't feel fair to. I mean, I guess he wants to do it. How many minutes did he play tonight? Like, it was close to forty. He was out there the whole game. He played thirty-seven. Uh, thirty-seven. Wow. That's ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, he he he's not in the shape to play thirty-seven minutes. Mitch played like Mitch played less than that. He's in better shape. Mitch played thirty. So. Mitchell Robbins playing 30 minutes. You, you got Embiid, who looks terrible, playing 37 he minutes. He looks this bad, is, man. He looks bad. But, you know, I just think this is our year. I mm. think we're going to win this in five or six. I am not scared of any team. I do think the Celtics are an exceptional team. We'll see if Porzingis, uh, the trader, uh, yeah. is healthy or not. Uh, and it, I'm delighted to take them to seven games and see how it goes. Let's go. Great job. Amazing uh, to have all four of you here. JD, great job on the grill this year. The 50 burger Let's came go. out. Mm. <laughs> so juicy, so perfect. Jay, when are you, when are you coming out, man? When are you coming I'm, out? I'm going to, I'm going to, you know how I do it. I'm going to just slide in for the game five, six, seven. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you'll, you'll see me pop up. I'll, right now, I'll be in the DMs. Are you, you coming today. to MSG? You going to Philly? You coming to Philly with us? I, I might come to Philly with you. You know how I do it. I wait to the last minute. And then yes. I get the <laughs> I get the decent seats, you know. I don't go yeah. too crazy, yeah. but I'll text you. Sunday one o'clock, man. Hit me. I'll hit you up. Yeah. Uh, I'll just say what row are you in, and then I, we'll I just see if I yeah. if I can get you an upgrade. Let's you know, do a little it. upgrade. Let's do it. Let's, Let's upgrade. It. All right, guys. Jay great Cal, job, boys. Check and, in. Uh, great season. We are fifteen games away. Fifteen Let's games. Go. Let's work hard, okay, everybody. Let's good go. job, everybody in the garden tonight. Great Jay job, Cal. The Jay fans Cal. Going nuts. It was bananas in there, man. It sounded like they're blowing the roof off the place. It's there was not an. You could hear it on the telecast. Wow, the telecast was like people were losing their mind. Wow, they said they said Gus went in. Were you watching on ESPN or MSG? I I was on uh, ESPN. You know, I I got the MSG pass. I can't get that MSG out here. Uh, Oh, yeah, we don't get that. We don't get that luxury. Maybe I could send Dolan like a. A hundred yeah. or two hundred or something. I don't know. Yeah, man. There's a way to get John, it. We got to tap into the feed, man. Got to tap into the feed. All right, man. I'll yes, talk to sir. you boys later. Great job. I'll add us, man. Jay Cal on the check in. Throw some fives in the chat with Jason Cal can Hook him up with somebody from Dykeman. Get give him the fire stick. <laughs> you'll get, you'll, get, <laughs> you'll get that. You'll get that MSG. Get it, get it that yeah, I know about the stick. fire stick. Yeah, that fire bro. stick, man. Fire stick for fifty. You need, you need that <laughs> Android box. Stick you need that Android <laughs> box. Jay Cal, twenty dollars a month gets you right, man. Every channel. All right, know? no problem. Yeah. How often I got to upgrade it? We'll, How often to we'll, break? We'll talk offline. We're on YouTube. Mm-hmm. We're on YouTube right now. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know. No links. Don't drop no links. Don't drop no links. Yeah, we don't talk about no jailbreaking, man. I'll call you. I'll call you up, man. I'll call you up. J. Cal on the check it salute. So... Jailbreaking a fire <laughs> stick? What? Yeah, man. JD, did you get your towel? Did you get your towel, JD? Hold up. Hold up. Where is it? Where is it? Yeah, I got it. I got it. I got it. Somewhere yeah. around here. Yeah, yeah. Somewhere around here. J. Now, did you did you catch a t-shirt when down. the t-shirt cannons was going off? Man, what you talking about? Hold up. Oh, you got one? <laughs> did he <you> actually? <laughs> Let's go. I did not Let's see that go. answer. Yeah, I man. We, we got some teas for the people. We got some teas for the people like we always do, man. Where we sit in the garden, we sit at 102 usually like most times. And that section is prime for t-shirts. And when they brought the t-shirt cannons out, I was with wifey and I was with my cousin. Shout out to Lash. And I was like, yo, watch. We're going to catch oh, a t-shirt. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Yep. Yep. I told him, I said, yo, we're going to catch a T-shirt from the T-shirt cannon. Next thing I know, the two of them get T-shirts. You got nothing. I, I, I got nothing. That's what you get. Cocky. That's what you get, I, man. <laughs> one, one, one flew at my cousin. I'm watching him catch one. Wifey taps me on the shoulder. She got one in her arm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. But yeah, that's, that, that's just the type of the type of time it was at MSG. It was just overall great vibes. So uh so to everybody in the chat. All right, back to the people, man. Carlo, let's go to Carlo from the Philippines. Let's go. Yeah. Let's yeah, go. Yeah, buddy. Hello, Talk hello, to hello. us, man. Hello. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. Let's go. Hello. Hello, hello. Yeah, yeah. Uh the game started 6 a.m. in the morning here. But if the next time the game starts at 1 a.m. to witching hours. Man, I am not going to work. Whew. What a game. Semi-carjack next affair for me. Uh, I was anticipating for MB to rip those bandages off from his knee, call the Asian spirit of spirits of evil and transform into Mumbra from Thundercats or something. <laughs> but yeah, we will be ready for them in game two. 
Jalen is a little off tonight, but I guarantee he will turn it up Monday. Guarantee. Uh, our X Factor, Bodega and Josh Hart. Bogey is definitely our out of our storage room, and he's our, out of our bodega. Uh, Josh Hart, my player of the game. Uh, Josh is doing that number three just uh, number three justice, uh, all, uh, with justice and honor. And that's what you get, Nick Nick Nurse, and that's what you get, uh, Kelly. Kubre for giving Josh Hart space to shoot the three. They they better put some respect on Josh Hart. I'm telling you. Uh, shout shout out to the uh, the microwave Deuce and Mitchy. They got uh, Derek Harper and Patrick Ewing's powers on those plays and playoff Jimmy. Uh, the Heat can have him, but we have a uh, G League Deuce here. Uh, and Embiid was afraid to go heads up with the Blockness Monster in the fourth quarter. Maybe because of the injury, but uh, big ups to Mitch for holding. And beat down and hitting two clutch free throws. Uh, so that that's that's all. Next in four, my guy Carlo. Yo, Carlo. First and foremost, you should be getting your merch in like a couple of days, man. Because I didn't realize you you booked it for for over overnight express to the Philippines. So that's to tell you, yeah. this man is a diehard diehard. Mm -hmm. The shipping is more expensive than the, the, the shipping was twice as much as a shirt. <laughs> all right, so shout out <laughs> yeah. to Carlo, man. Yo, I yeah. swear. So shout out to you, man. Uh, no, it, it, all, all honesty, we appreciate your support. Uh, great calls as Thank usual. You, and uh, yeah, man, it's, it's on the way with love from KFTV, man. So once you get it, let us know. And, and rock it, rock it with pride, man. Represent us well, bro. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. Harlow from the Philippines. My man paid twice as much for the for the shipping that he did for the merch <laughs> but that's that's just the you know the power of kftv man it, it's all love it's a family show indeed and for you guys at home man go ahead and get your merch man shop.tv.com <laughs> what you will see right now you're gonna see a lot of orders that are sold out however if you hit the pre-order button oh, if you scroll down man. gamma to the pre-order button uh, you could you could still order your merch and we'll get that out on the next rollout. The first rollout we sold a lot. It's a lot of sizes may be sold out, but go to shop.nextfantv.com, see if your size is there. If not, you could still pre-order and we'll get it out to you as soon as we can. So shout out to everybody that did cop their merch, Carlo as well. <laughs> Why me on the Discord? Why me? Go ahead and unmute your mic. Yo, fellas, what up, man? What up, man? Great telecast, man. What's good? Yo, CP, Alex, yep. CK. JD, hello K. Let's go. Man, I know it was live in there. I had the speakers on. I turned Correct. I turned the crazy. volume up on the speakers. I had Gus and Clyde. Shout out to my uncle for letting me use the Spectrum password so oh, I could yeah. watch MSG. Yeah, that's Spectrum. <laughs> that's Spectrum <laughs> coming in and clutch, boy. Clutch, be clutch, man. So shout out to my uncle. But yeah, I just want to say it was a great team win. Deuce came in, no fear. He shot the three from the top of the key. I already knew he was going to have a good game. Once he came mm. in, that first shot, it was cash. I knew I knew he was going to get us out the rut. He's done that a few times. So I'm glad that, you know what I'm saying, he's on that progressive up, you know what I'm saying, to keep shooting the ball because DiVincenzo didn't have it. So he stepped up. Mitchie Big already, I already match. know what it is. He played great defense, Hartenstein with the pocket passes to get Jalen to the basket. Those is also great. And we're going to need these types of wins. I know y'all don't want to see Josh Hart shooting like that. I know y'all don't want to see these types of plays, but those are the types of magic that win series. Those are the types of magic that demoralize other teams when they playing 24 seconds defense and we, and Josh Hart hit a double clutch three. They're going to look at that like, yo, he's not supposed to make that. But yeah, this is what we work for. This is what we've been doing this whole time. So like, listen, man, turn the volume up. Just watch the game. We don't got to be overcritical. They professionals. They're going to do what they do. They know how to win. They prepared. So that's all we got to say, man. Shout out to everybody. I'll see y'all on Monday. Have a good one, man. Let's go. Let's go. Where are you going to be at Monday? Hello? Hello? Why me? Say that again. You, uh, you, you said you was at the game or not? No, no, no. I had the volume turned oh. up the crib. I'm, I'm down south right now. Oh, you in the south? So, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My kids right. is down here, so I came down here. I, I was in New York a couple years ago, but okay. I'll be back in May. So if we still in the playoffs in hey. May... I'm going to be out there. You know where we're going to be at, man. Sucker Punch is the place to be for the watch parties, man. If you're not at the Garden, it's the next best thing. Shout out to everybody that pulled up to Sucker Punch, man. I heard it was rocking in there. Eric hit me. He was like, yo, it was a zoo in here. First quarter, 
had everything. And, and when Josh Harden, OG hit the threes, the place was going crazy. So shout out to everybody that pulled up the sucker punch, man. Absolutely. Okay. What else we got in here? Shoot to our franchise channel members. Yeah, we rocking, man. Number one show for the fans by the fans. Nine one. Yep. I'm over here saying JD. I mean CP. Yes, sir. You're not <laughs> sipping today. What's up, man? Oh, I'm sipping. Oh, this, this is a family okay. show. This, I, I, was, I was just going to say something, but you know what? I, I don't want to encourage this type of behavior. I'm okay. <laughs> That's all I will say. I, I am okay. I am in, I am in okay. great spirits. Oh, the team won. And, uh, and, and, you know, the scotch has been flowing since about, you know, 6 a.m. 6 p.m. 6 p.m. That's all. 6 a.m. I was about no, to no, say no, we got no, some no. problems over here, bro. It's 6 6 a.m. I was in a body bag. I couldn't even move, bro. You, you, <laughs> y'all saw me last night. I was gonna say, yeah, yeah nah. JD, love the bit. Put all that merch, huh? My man got the bro. burger on deck. He ready to eat now. Yo, look I, look, I know. Look, look. I know. CK saw this in the chat, but shout out to Brandon yo, McNeely. Yo, he Brandon said McNeely. Bro. He, he said CP's dad on a speedboat right now, taking the merch to Carlo in the Philippines. <laughs> The image, bro. Shout out to my pops, man. Shout out to my pops. I got to set him on a much needed vacation, man. Because, man, I'll tell pop, you, we was man. working. We, we, we was working, man. It was a family show with the merch. Let me tell you, man. But, like oh, I said, that's God. just, it's just all in love, man. All, all in love. My man, JD, really. Look at you. What you eating, dog? Like, you look yeah. like I'm waiting for the waiter yeah, to JD, come and drink. Yeah, JD, what you got, bro? Like, I got, look at I you. got chicken fingers and fries, man. What you you got? got chicken fingers and fries? Yeah. I'm Not waiting. Are you waiting on your food? Oh, I'm, okay. I'm waiting. Okay. What you got? Chopped ready, cheese? What, what you got? Chopped man, he's got the towel on like a you got chopped cheese? <laughs> nah, nah. Ain't no chopped cheese today, man. Bacon cheeseburger. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. I gotta go Fancy bacon cheeseburger, it. medium. Fancy with it, huh? Oh, medium. Is it medium? Medium. Yeah, it's it's medium. medium. Let's go. Medium. I had a burger. Yeah. I had a burger at the Delta Club tonight. So I switched it up. I went on a diet and got chicken fingers and wild fries. Mm. So, at least, uh, you know, at least it's not from Cleveland. No, no, no. We are <laughs> well, not doing that. Don't worry. That. CP's got to go to Philadelphia, which, you know, he's not too thrilled about. Oh, no, I mean, you know, uh, you know, with the, uh, compared to the other options, no, it wasn't ideal. But I'll make do, you know. I'll, I'll go to Tony Luke's. I'll get a nice cheesesteak. Hold the cheese. Oh, bowl. shout Maybe out to. With that. Man, I forgot the concession stand. But shout out to shout out to the homie that, that took care of me, one of the concession stands. He gave me a yeah. 50% off because I because of the next fan nice. TV. He's like, Oh, you you Jenny, let's go. Let CP know I said what's up. You know let's what? Go. I'm gonna give you a 50% off. Yeah. I said thank you, man. Cause nah, K- KFTV gets love at MSG. Sheesh, Please, that was expensive. That bill yeah. was going crazy. KFTV gets love at MSG, man. We we, we definitely appreciate it. 18 um, beans for a beer. Golly, you're heavy, <laughs> Jay, How you think that's that felt, for it, felt, it felt a lot better giving nine dollars for that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I tell you that, man. Those concessions getting paid more than Deuce, yeah, bro. Golly, bro. <laughs> bro, Bruce, oh, you know? bro, you ask for a fork, they charge you. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. Real talk. Uh, shout out to Billy R twenty three twenty dollars super chat, and we're gonna read all the super chats as well, man. Just you know, give us give us some time. We are having a good time here. Billy R twenty three twenty dollars super chat says, uh, "Knicks playoffs right now, it's a beautiful thing, but let's take a minute to appreciate KFTV for everything they do. Appreciate you guys, man. We have to take a step back and enjoy the moment because you never know when that will change." That was that was a real comment right there. Mm. You never know. So, yeah, Billy, man, great, great uh, perspective is what I'll say, man. Thanks for the comment. Thanks for the super chat for sure. Uh, let me see what other super chats have come in here that we didn't read. Shoot, salute to all the franchise channel members. Al, I'm not sure if you read all these people, but did you read uh, it? The you last one I stopped at, you can start from uh, Reese Anderson with the $5 super chat. Reese last- Anderson, Reese Anderson, Mr. Anderson. Shout out Brandon Guest. He pulled up at uh, Soccer Punch. The watch party was a movie. Shout out to Brandon. Him and his wife celebrating the two-year anniversary. Yes, sir. Good to see them. Reese Anderson. Reese Anderson. I'm trying to see. I don't know if, if the order that you're seeing it in is the same order I'm seeing it in. Mm, okay. We got Rambo. We got Billy R. The 77. I'm not sure. Shout out to everybody that's in Super Chats. Dell Will says, our bench guys will all have significant starter experience. Uh, Del will also say, Why y'all do precious like that on the shirt? Got him looking like little penny. <laughs> shout out, mm. <laughs> listen. First of all, shout out Chris Murray who bodied the design. Uh, killed you know, it, gave him the vision, he killed it. This far, and, you know, we we wanted the prominent figures, 
we 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 left off Bodega, you know, at that at the time Crazy, he had not bro. earned his stripes at the time Crazy, we made the design. Bro. And we I left we put my guy Burks in the trunk. <laughs> Burks ain't in it. You know? Okay. That's fair. Yeah. I'm a I'm a realistic dictator. This is for the guys who put in the work all year. <laughs> this is for the guys who put in the work all year, bro. So 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 that's how we wanted to do it. <laughs> he does wait, 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 wait. Movie. CP, are, are are you are you finally okay with Bogey yeah. getting the Bodega nickname? Oh, you yes. missed it. Oh, oh you, you missed, missed it, it JD. Missed it. Yeah, he's I missed it. it. We we already blessed the name. United. We already ble- we United. blessed United. United. Okay. Yes, okay, yes. The the uh as a president of the uh the Knicks nickname commission. As I said before. Shout out to CK. Yeah, CP came out like a... the Queen of England, you know, he pulled out the sword and was just like Right. Bro, there's yes. no way you cannot drink that bro this wow. this this thing this <laughs> thing called nick's basketball is not for the faint of heart you cannot it's not for the faint that. of heart bro that lot. <clears throat> you have to earn it you got to earn it and these guys are earning it in the brightest lights mitch the eldest statesman like like Look, just you know, the injuries is the only thing that has been stopping him from just being That's a good it. force for this team. That's it. That's like, it. The way there. that man started. Yeah, he's there for us, man. Mitch is there for us. Like, look at the evolution of McBride. He was looking like G Lee McBride out there, but you know, Bogey. He the last time he played in the playoffs was uh with Utah, which was maybe uh two years ago. You know, he's been playing with bums ever since, so he just didn't know what he was going to come out with, but. Came out playing like a veteran, you know? And you can see, but when Bogey plays well, he he has a little bit of a quickly effect. You see where, like, see how was, there, you have guys that make shots, but it, the way that they make shots, their style in doing so kind of has a different effect on the crowd, on the energy. Um, Bogey does that because he's quick. You know, he, he's like a little Clay Thompson. He gets the ball. He's quick, you know, quick um, release. And it's like a style way of the way that he scores, and especially when he shoots threes. It kind of like gives energy to the team. So when he's playing well, he raises the ceiling of the Knicks in terms of the way that, you know, the other team defends him. So if he continues to play well, he plays like this. Um, in the end, when you look at the box score, he didn't end up shooting great, but he was 50% from three. So yeah. as long as the three-point shot, and, and he was actually playing the other way around where he was a little bit better from two, but his three point shots weren't going in, so his performances didn't look as consistent. If he does it the way he did today, where he ends up, I think four for twelve, but he's three of six from three. Yeah, that is what 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 is going to count, you know, in the playoffs for sure. I, and I thought his defense was solid. You know, yep. you know, we talked about it last night. Like, what what is what was the matchup that was going <clears> to <throat> really expose him? And there really wasn't any. Maybe we'll see the adjustment in game two by Nick Nurse, but you, you really didn't see it. The only big play he gave, not big play, but the only play where he really just, you know, just gave it up was uh, an Ubre cut or Ubre drive at the yeah. baseline and went got, went by him. But I thought his help defense was good. You know, he was tagging rollers. He he was good defending. Got some timely rebounds as well. Uh, so I thought I thought defensively he stood tall, which is going to be most important. And I feel like his attacking ability. I'm telling you, I don't think he gets enough credit, man. He, he's yeah, a yeah. really good attacker, and it, it created a lot of offense in that second quarter that was much needed. Because as soon as he came in, his first, like after the three, immediately after that, he went right into the teeth of the defense and drew a foul. Like I feel like that that's something that, like I said, the veteran presence of him, he understands where the game is heading. We were there searching for shots. Our entire offense was at the three point line. We couldn't get nothing. He get checks into the game, and he's immediately mixing it up. And, so I, yeah, I, I like I said yesterday, I just feel like he's gonna be very vital for us going forward off that bench, man. And and for Nick fans, I'll say this in terms of Brunson, this, in my opinion, from when I look at the landscape of the East, this will be his toughest personal challenge, in my estimation, mm-hmm. because you have Batum who's six eight, six nine, Kelly Uber is six seven. But it's not only those guys. He, he he he's already he's already beaten that whole narrative of put size on 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 Brunson, six you know taller guys, and they're gonna do well. He's already you know beaten that narrative. It's about having those players available, but then Kyle Lowry. Kyle Lowry knows Jalen Brunson. Have the Villanova connection. Kyle Lowry is a very savvy defender. He's very you know smart. 
So, you know, the way that they game plan, you saw when Larry defended uh, Josh Hart, when Larry defended Brunson in the small possessions he did, whenever he defended anybody from Villanova, he knew exactly their tendencies. He knew he exactly him. how to defend he them. He them out there, man. So he's giving these guys, he's giving Kelly Oubre these tips, and you could see what they're doing early in the possession is they're not allowing Jalen Brunson to get comfortable in the shot clock. You got 24 seconds. They're pressuring the basketball. They're reaching. Even if they don't get a steal, that's not the point of doing that. It's the point of trying to disrupt Jalen Brunson into his comfortable yeah. motion. So let's see what adjustments he makes for game two. But I think other than maybe Drew Holiday with Boston, this right here mm. will be his toughest challenge. And if we can get by I this agree. series, I am very confident about mm -hmm. how far the Knicks can go in this playoff run. Especially after Completely you saw this agree. game because they wasn't even their best. Yeah. It wasn't even their best. No. Like if they saw knocking them shots, I mean look, look I mean, look at the combined shooting here between Brunson and even just even Chenzo alone. I mean Brunson shot eight of twenty six, even Chenzo three of ten. That's eleven for thirty six from his starting backcourt. Yeah. The Not turnovers, they gave her twenty one points off of turnovers. You clean that up, this could have been a blowout tonight. Yeah, you know especially what I mean? with all the offensive boards we had. Yeah, for sure, man. This could have been for a blowout. Sure. Like, oh, for he sure. still got to his spots. And yes, Ubre and Batum, they're going to bother him with their size. He still got to it and just missed. Uh, and, I, and I tell you what, Tom Thibodeau, man, I came away from this game very confident and very encouraged about um, the head coach of the New York Knicks because he basically transferred – the way that he's managed, you know, tight games in the season, in the playoffs, you know, riding the hot hand, trusting younger players, trusting a guy like Bogey who struggled. And if he played well, sticking with him, Dante DiVincenzo didn't see a lot of minutes in terms of important times, um, sticking with Mitch over the starting center. Like these things seem simple, but we've seen Thibodeau, has stuck to more of a rigid rotation in the past where if you're a starter, you're going to be closing. Where if you're this player, that's you're going to be your role. And he sticks to that. Tom Thibodeau today coached like, listen, you know, he's adapting. And I'm confident. And like I said last night, I'm rooting for him because he definitely deserves for us to get to the promised land because of how hard he works. So props to him for adapting, continuing to, you know, just get better as a head coach and, and and showcase his 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 um his work ethic on the players. So good, yeah. you know, very confident after tonight in the head coach. Yeah, and, and give him credit because um he as you said, he trusted the players. And if he didn't trust Deuce, they don't win this game. You, they don't win this game without Deuce McBride. You know what's crazy is that his adjustments are more so on the offensive end. And they really are on the defensive end, which is even crazy considering he's a defensive-minded head coach. Just think about how that fourth quarter played out, or just like even the second half, just breaking down the zones and looking for open three-point shooters. Like that's something that he's coaching these guys in practice to look out for. And the fact that this team can now break a zone, that's huge, man. You gotta give Tibbs credit for creating some offense for this team, especially after losing Randall. That's huge. How about him winning two CP? They they got to look at that in the NBA, at least in the playoffs. He wins two challenges. Shout out to Anthony, Anthony Parasol in the chat brought that up. I was thinking about that, but he brought that up. Thank you for being a channel member as well, where he, he you know, he stayed in the chat. That's his one, two challenges. The second challenge he Dude. won was, I believe, with like eight minutes left in the fourth quarter. Yes. Yeah. And although yeah. he won that challenge. They keep losing timeouts. It's bullshit. Yeah. I'm like, I'm thinking, yeah. man, he won this challenge. That's great. Mm -hmm. Because at that point, every possession was important. Yeah. And I believe we were up to 82, 80 or 84, 82. And so he felt that, listen, right now, this is our opportunity. But then it's like, we have eight minutes to go in the fourth quarter. You don't even have a challenge. How do you not reward, especially, okay, you don't want to do that in the regular season, whatever. But in the playoffs, if a head coach calls two challenges and he's correct, give him the ability to get a third, especially when the guy wins the second challenge with eight minutes to go in the fourth. At, at that point, 
you're you're not rewarding him for being correct. You're actually giving him a consequence eight minutes to go. Right. You know, you want to challenge for something left in, you know, three minutes or two minutes. You don't have that ability to know. You're at the mercy of Scott Foster. Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> you, sh you, sh you should never lose a timeout for the rest being an idiot. You know, the first, the first challenge you had to make in the oh, first half was clearly and an out of bounds off of uh, mm -hmm. off Philly, and you lose a timeout. At. Like, you should never be charged for the refs being a fool and, and missing and missing plays. I said it all the time. Yep. You know, I, yep. I, didn't, I wasn't happy with the officiating, but it is what it is. It, it happens, but they, they got the job done. Did, uh, did, you, did you think of anything about the way the Knicks and, and, and the Knicks of all people, the people who keep things tight to the vest, you know, Leon approved that. Pre-game, Fred Catch tweets, literally the report card, the statistics. Yeah. We, we we break down the players' analytics. We literally got a refs. whole analytic report card about these refs. CP, yeah. do you think there was anything, you know, sublim, you know, anything that the Knicks were trying to do with that? No, not necessarily. Um, it's never I, happened before. I've I, never seen it like that. Yeah, but may maybe we just don't hear about it, right? Like, you know, all these teams invest so much in analytics. It's not surprising, though. You know what I mean? Like, they 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 know when you know so many, like, player tendencies based on all of the, the gadgets and the gadgets that are out there on the court and things that are trailing players and, you know, how much minutes you need. It's, it's in all sports how much analytics has evolved and the technology to track those analytics has evolved. It's not surprising that they would have, you know, referee tendencies, how they call things tracked. You know, it's like, it's kind of like a second, maybe, maybe it's like a second spectrum type of technology. It, it's that type of deal. But I think it just goes to show you, you know, their investment in that a and Tibbs in, in terms of how he breaks down the game, just another set of data that he's using. I think that's, that's great. You don't think at all, I think, to what J.D. is pointing out, you don't think there was any, like, psychological warfare with the refs themselves to say, hey, go against your own tendencies and call this a different game? Sure, sure, yeah, I think so. From from iHeart's comments yesterday mm. to that kind of, like, leaking, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's mm -hmm. kind of weird how game one of, the, like, we heard this in game number 83 of a season. That the, the first time we're hearing it. So, yeah, I, I think it was. But it's all part of the it's all part of the game. It's all part of the games and shit. Especially when you got a bonehead like Scott Foster officiating. <laughs> I, I don't think it was a coincidence that they dropped it on, on that night, on a game on a night like tonight with Scott Foster officiating. And then the matchup in beat, I think he played a part in that. True. True. Yeah. Good, good job by them. By any means necessary, man. Uh, let's take a, few, a couple more calls before we wrap up, man. Great night tonight at MSG all the way around. The squad cast back in the building, man. Hit that thumbs up button for you, boys. Like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Shout out to uh, uh, Bismo Too Lovely on the Discord. Go ahead and unmute your mic. DP, you guys can hear me? Loud and clear, man. It's your show. Let's go. Thanks for taking the call. Uh, I was in the building tonight. It was electric. Let them know. Was, Let them know. It was loud. What, that, what section were you? What section were you? What section were you? What section? Sorry, can you hear me? What section were you? Oh, 103. 103. So right by you guys. Oh, you're right typically. next. Okay. Yeah, I was in 102. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. But um, oh my God, so many points to to break down tonight. First of all, the the supporting cast, I don't know if you guys noticed, but it was a 23 point swing from Q1 to the end of the first half. So if you if you want to yeah. talk about supporting cast coming in, you know, Bogey, Hart, Mitch. Mitch put the clamps on MB tonight. It was phenomenal. Put him in a car seat. It was it was crazy to watch. I think there was one play. He dove on the ground. They went for the jump ball. The garden exploded. And I, I think that's, went that's in the crazy room. after Whoa. that play. Crazy after that play, bro. Insane. Insane. And then I think to top it all off, Hart hitting those two threes in the end really just kind of put the, the exclamation point on the evening. Um, and it was funny because early on in the game, my friends and I, we were talking. We were saying there's some shots he's passing up. And we, I mean, I know you guys speak about it a lot where he's kind of hesitant to take that shot, but taking those two threes, I mean, at the end with the game on the line, you know, just to to kind of close it out, send him home um, and just kind of put that uh, that exclamation point where it needed to be put. Listen, man, I'd, I'd rather him take him and miss with confidence than like being gun shy. Gun shy helps nobody, you know, 
he's out there. He has to be able to 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 you know be confident in taking those shots in the half court. But when we can play fast, because when you you know when he can play fast, that's his time. But when you're in the half court, like you have to you know help that offense flow and not compound yeah. the issue. So couldn't yeah, agree more. Yeah, he's he's as cardiac as it gets, but um, delivered when we needed it to. That's my X fact in this series, man. Yeah, hundred percent. And right, the deuce man. was loose tonight. It was it was crazy to see him yeah. take over and and see all the growth that he's kind of uh, accumulated throughout the year and just showcase it at the biggest stage. For sure. Um, I can see his bag getting a little bit deeper. I see some flashes of Brunson in there, so Big time. he's definitely learning from him. Um, and at the post game interview, Brunson did shout him out. So that's yeah. Brunson being Brunson. Great team. First thing he said. Um, first thing he said. Flowers for the night. Yeah, when Rebecca asked Brunson, like, what, what, you know, what turned things around? He said, Deuce McBride. Deuce is developing that step back from Brunson. See that step back three? Whoa. Whoa. That was nasty at the garden. Insane, I insane man. Bismo, how it's your boy, man? Good times tonight, man. Yeah, yeah, appreciate it. Thanks for taking my call. Shout out you guys. Shout out all the hard work you do. Just appreciate listening to the pregame coming in. I uh, couldn't have gotten more hype just listening to that. So appreciate all the work you guys do. Let, let's go, man. Definitely appreciate it. Call back anytime, bro. CK, you did 2K. You you did 2K. You did pregame by yourself. <laughs> was it, was it you again. and Alex on pregame, or uh, or was it just you? Uh, for the play by play? Yeah, yeah, it was just me, just me. No, we oh, okay, TK, okay. how was the play by play? Shout out to the fans, man. I, it did good numbers, but you know, how was the yeah. play by play? Because I can only imagine the game was up and down. It was it was crazy, uh, man? How, 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 how was your emotions of the play by play? Man, play? I mean, <laughs> luckily that VOD gonna be there. Replay game gonna have a great time with that. We had a lot of fun though. Like people, we we already had like five hundred deep, and wow. in that delay you were talking about, JD, we were like looking on every ESPN they got, ESPN <laughs> News, <laughs> ESPN, ESPN the Plus, Ocho. Plus Plus, the Ocho. <laughs> we're like, it's got to be showing summer, but then we found out it was uh, starting at six twenty three. Let's but uh, nah, yeah, the emotions. You know how these 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 chats. What began. was your favorite moment? What was your favorite moment of the game? My the favorite moment, moment of the game was, was the Mitch one of the moment. Josh Hart threes. Oh, the, 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 the Josh the Hart Mitch threes. Moment. Though, but that Mitch block rebound and throw it right off the back. Oh of, uh, my Matt god, Brown, that was that was the moment I was like, oh yeah, Mitch is here. Like if if you weren't sure if Mitch is, is, is remembers how to play basketball at a high level in Madison Square Garden. Put this on your um on your on your fridge or wherever you want to put it. Put it on repeat, retweet it, play, like whatever you got to do. Cause the the amount of IQ balance, it like that was Mitchell Robinson that we were all excited about to start off the season. Like that play was great. Um, but yeah, my honorable mention was the the step back you talked about by Deuce McBride. Because not only did he step back, he spun, looked at the dude, shot the three, and man, timeout <laughs> forced imme immediately. Those are my two plays tonight for sure but um yeah shout out to everybody in Knicks Nation especially Knicks Fan TV crew sure. we got the best in the business like we were here having a good time a roller coaster of emotions you know Scott Foster was getting it you know what I mean Josh yeah. Hart was getting it until he was being praised you know how, how the chat be it was it was great it was a good time how can, how can you want to be anywhere else man the only no thing else. we don't do is Nick spaces but you yeah, got the free it. game you got the play by play you got the watch party you got right after the game everything. live at the garden you got the post yeah. game everybody I mean, was loving last night's show man everybody's loving the squad cast last yeah, night. Fun, man. good stuff yeah, it's been the ocho yeah yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I think um <laughs> Yo, from yo, for Mitch, man, he deserves it. He deserves this moment because yeah. of how he started the season, and how dejected he was to be injured. And you you saw it. How many times? You know, he, he he's the type of person. He's a he's a one of one first and foremost. A very unique kid, but he it was so down. You know, he and he showed that emotion on all of his platforms in terms of you know having that injury because it came at like the worst time. He was having a, probably his best season. Absolutely. So he deserved this night, man. He, he really deserved this night, and you could tell he won it when he when he ripped that ball from Embiid late in the game. That was my mm, love. That moment too. Yeah. Just yeah. like the caller well, said, the Garden went crazy with me. Yeah. Because that yeah. that's it. And I, 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 in the jersey, that's it, man. And I don't care, man. I'm biased to Mitch. I, I think today, I don't know what, I don't know why, but it was just something about the way he played today that. I went to a whole nother level of becoming a Mitch fan. And, and I reminisce and I'm just thinking about 
like him and Deuce, like these are two guys that started this journey with the other kids, with RJ, Quickly, Grimes. And let's be real, we're human. You see those three guys that you develop close relationships with, you see them go. What are you thinking? You're thinking, yo, I'm the next one to go. If they got rid of RJ, Grimes, and and, and quickly, like, I might be next. Mm. And so there's just a mental part of it. That's why today's in today's time, mental health is so important um, and it's so talked about because of these little nuances that just affect you as a player. And for Mitch personally, again, for him to deal with that, um, because remember when the trade was happening, he was gone and he felt like an outsider. You know, um, he was out with the injury. You know, Harenstein comes in, takes that starting job with glowing colors, and then he has to worry about his rehab. For him to come back, man, and play this well. Like, I'm rooting for Mitch, whoever happens in the future, but, man, like, I'm so proud of him, man, and, and, and I can't wait to see how he continues to play. And I'm confident that this will continue because – if you look at anything from last year, you know, you talk about playoff, this playoff, that playoff Mitch might actually be a thing because in the playoffs, he yeah. certainly dominates, you know, under the basket. So you know what? Shout out to Mitch, man. You you yeah. know who uh you know who said um that Mitch was his X factor? We talk about all these X factors and we and we collected everybody's X factor over the course of you know all the content that we made. You no know, no one else said Mitch is their X Factor except Scott Perry. Mm. Wow. Be, wow. Stay in on business. Said, we said hard. We said oh, <laughs> you, you got you you have to message him. Yeah. Stand in on you got to text him, Scott DM Perry. him, however you have contact with him. You got to hit him Scott up. Perry, like, man. I I wanna I wanna find this sound bite, man. Even if I just play, we might not be able to do the video just because I'm not producing, but I want to find this sound bite. Scott Perry was the only one that said. Mitchell Robinson. Um, oh, here, here it goes. Here it goes. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. I'm about to pull it up. Here we go. So to everybody in the chat, I'll just pull the sound bite up. This was Scott Perry on his uh on Mitch being his, his playoff X Factor. Here, here it is. Let's see how it comes out here. No, you do it. But yeah. he, 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 here's why. And yeah. this is no this, you know, look, uh, Isaiah Hardstown has been tremendous mm -hmm. in his absence. It's had a career season in the NBA uh, at the mm -hmm. center position. But Mitchell does some things, and he's bigger, and he's bigger too, and more athletic. Uh, can he get back to playing? He was playing at the beginning of the season because Mitchell was on track to be on one of the all defensive teams. Oh this yeah, year, oh yeah, absolutely. At the beginning of this year, yep. He's playing terrific basketball, and you know he gives you a lob threat. Again, you talked about being able to get easy baskets, and his ability to offensive rebound. I mean, he he's one of the best, if not the best, offensive rebounding player in the league. Mm. So can he get back and and give them the 25 minutes a night at least that are gonna be important and the physicality to go along with it? But again, that that athleticism and that presence that he has is a little bit different than Hardenstein because Guards, and you know, and I can go back to my time in New York, and I see when I watch him play still now. When guards drove the lane, they had a different look on their face when Mitchell Robinson was in the game versus when he was out the game. The lane was much more wide open when he was out the game. They were like, okay, we can just drive to the basket and you know, we'll take our chances at the rim. Somebody come and try to catch this shot. When Mitchell was in there. They're looking around trying to find it. And guys will, you know, a step hesitant sometimes. So that's a big factor to me. And so Mitchell would be my X factor here. All right. That was Scott Perry, man. CCP, that's that insight that goes deeper than like stuff that we even talk about. When we when we wonder, you know, when you see the Ian Bagley reports about people in the front office, members in the organization and in the organization are higher on this player than that player. Like that type of insight from Scott Perry is what goes around in the war room when executives are trying to make decisions on who's a better fit than who 
and what play you should target yeah. over the next is, you know, like Scott Perry's angle. He's in that war room. He's probably telling Leon Rose that this is, you know, basically what he told us. He's telling Leon Rose, this is why I feel Mitch is this much of a valuable player to this organization. So that's why when you have guests like Scott Perry on the channel, it is amazing contact for the audience to see kind of get that insight on how executives or whoever you have as a guest, how they think about, um, you know, player evaluation and, and some of those things, you get a, a real interesting perspective on how they feel, how they view the game. Well said, well said, man. Machiavelli, Matt on the discord. Go ahead and unmute your mic and close this out tonight. Third try. Hey, say Pete, you hear me? Loud and clear, man. What's the name? Where are you calling in from? I right, man, appreciate it. Calling in from Orlando. Uh, Orlando. Yo, they said yeah, we need we need to set up an Orlando watch party. That's what they say, man. We're deep down here. I'm telling you, we really are. It's crazy. Nice. Um, no, nah, I just appreciate you guys. You guys have been helping me get through these wall school finals. So, you know, I really appreciate it. Um, hey. I just had a couple of quick questions. Uh going forward in this series, how do you guys see it playing out? Because I feel like Nick Nurse is gonna throw a lot more zone at us. So kind of wanted to see, you know, what's the best way of really breaking that down. And also, too, if OG Adenobi, his offensive game, if he can really get it going, what what is the, you know, can we really make a run with this guy? Because I feel like if he can get it going offensively, I mean, I feel like the sky's the limit. Without, without Embiid at full strength, we'll be fine. Yeah. We'll be fine. They, you know, they can throw whatever they want at us, like – we have the shooters to bust his own. It's got knocked down on shots. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and you know, we've all said it. Brunson's Brunson's not gonna slip mm -mm. too many times. No way. Series. He's not playing like that twice. No way. It's not gonna happen. It's just not gonna happen. You know, they were just playing tight. They they were just playing tight. And then when OG picked up, he picked up his first foul, tried to guard and beat in the post. And then the second foul off Maxi. And Maxi's a blur. He, he was burning everybody. Um, so it, I think it really took OG out of his game from the start, which was unfortunate. But and, and we still won the game. You won the game where your best player didn't shoot the ball well, and your best defender was almost neutralized because of foul trouble, especially early in the game. And you still won the game. Well, I, th I think we're, we're in a good shape. We're in good shape. They just got to go out there and execute. Cut, cut the turnovers out. The 21 points you gave them, they almost blew this one. Deuce saved the game. And Josh Hart. Josh Hart being able to knock down his shots after being, you know, a little gun shy early. Those were major, major plays. Uh, Mitch as well. We talked about I was going to say, and Mitch, yeah. Don't, Mitch. Miles Mitch. McBride. He shut down. <laughs> Highest plus minus in Knicks history in a playoff game. Wow. Before him at plus 37. Before him, you had Chris Ooh. Childs. You had Chris <laughs> Childs at plus 29 in the 1998 Eastern Conference semifinals, game three against Indiana. Damn. And before that, you had Patrick Ewing, plus 27, 1999 Eastern Conference uh, finals round, uh, game one against Miami. And then before that, you had J.R. Smith, plus 27, 2013. My guy. Against oh, Indiana. So McBride, 37, Chris Childs, 29, Patrick Ewing, and J.R. Smith, plus 27. That differential is crazy. 37, then you go down to 29. It's yeah, dude, this was something different, bro. That's what I'm saying. This guy, mm -mm. I feel so bad. We are robbing this kid, man. That <laughs> agent needs to be fired yesterday. That This kid, oh, my goodness, bro. Gem, but, man. So, wait, J.D., the last one is a plus 27 with Jr. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, plus 29 with Chris Childs and then 27 Patrick Ewing and Jr. And Jr. You, you know who's also a plus 27 right now? Who? Boyan Bogdanovich. Come on, man. Mm. The X Factor. Bodega. <laughs> Bodega. The double deli. bogey. <laughs> He's earned you know, it. You know one who isn't? He earned it. <laughs> <laughs> Put him in a trunk. <laughs> Put him in a trunk. <laughs> Put him in the why? Yeah. <laughs> let, me, let me chill before uh, before I don't show up on this channel for the next ten, uh, right. the next the next playoff run. JD gonna magically on the matrix. He's not even he's not even on the merch, man. 
<laughs> He's like, what more do you I, want I, from I me? I gave y'all, put him in the truck. I gave y'all the Yeah, Jay, you got to be careful. Remember, what, after CP and I had that major debate, I wasn't on the, I wasn't on the, the next show. Awesome. Yeah, exactly. He called me up like, "Yo, you want to come?" Yeah, <laughs> what you doing, right? <laughs> it's, it's that's that's old news, man. That's old news, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hyping old news. We in, the, we in the playoffs, man. We 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 left them in the truck a long time ago. We we in the playoffs. Oh, yeah, man. Not, yeah, ain't nothing from me since then. It's not, it's nothing to say, man. The rotation is set. It's over with, man. Mm. It is what it is, man. We winning, bro. I'm a Knicks fan first. Remember that at all times. Mm. Cheers. Game one in the books. Monday mm. night, we had Sucker Punch. Pull up on us, man. We in there heavy. Shout out to everybody that tapped in with us. We live, man. It is time. It is time. What are we doing for game two? Uh, Sucker Punch. Uh, I'll be there. Sucker Punch, uh, you know. Okay. Well, game yeah, two man. is uh, Monday. Monday. Saturday, Monday. Monday. Monday, yeah, game two, and then you got game three Thursday in Philly, and then you going out to Philly for any of those games? Sunday, you said four. You said Sunday, four, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jump on the iron horse. You don't seem too thrilled about that, CP. It's not like Miami. Yeah, or I'm good. Like uh, no. uh, nah, nah, nah. I, I, I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you this advice, CP. Yeah, I, I, I get it. You know, Knicks fan TV with a hat. We, we safe in New York. Mm-hmm. When you go out there, just be careful. You know, once the game's over, get out, get up he out of there. Go home. Let's get right Bring to some post brass game. knuckles is what Jamie's saying. Philly is different, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, we don't, yeah. don't trash talk too much. Right, right. Yeah. Because they're different out there. I'm just trust saying. Me, man, trust me. <laughs> different KTV, animal. We, we good everywhere, man. You know what I mean? We got people from state to state, man. We, 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 we straight. We straight, man. We just check in and we good, man. You know? Oh, boy, oh, boy. You could, you don't want to see how many plain clothes Philly fans was in the garden tonight. It was <laughs> like, yo, I was like, yo, you a cop? Like, you dudes sit behind. Oh, they was and undercover. Anybody <laughs> sitting in there with like no Knicks gear whatsoever, just like plain street clothes, they were a Philly fan. Mm. That was it. <laughs> they were a Philly fan. I promise you, everyone around me, if they didn't have Nick like like Knicks gear on, and they were just in plain clothes. Straight up Philly fan. You're talking about they just straight up play. Just just no straight no up. no emotion, just a solid clap. Oh my God. I was using the bathroom, man. He got Philly fans just crying and bead. He's always hurt. He's always hurt. Oh man. <laughs> I promise you. <laughs> so somebody gonna get that man a, a, a blanket or something, man. Oh my man was <laughs> oh my God. He was they were so hurt. They were so hurt. But hey, that that's their problem, man. We we uh we keep it pushing. Take care of business, though. You know, don't don't rest on their laurels. Take care of business. And I think Captain Clutch will have these guys ready hot, hard as well. And Devo, I think game two is, a, is the Nova game. I think game two is the Nova game. So, mm. yeah, man. Keep it locked. Great show, everybody. Great show, Al. Great show. Shout out to CK for starting the show off. Shout out to CK and Al for post game. Uh, everybody that was outside of MSG, what a, what a time. Everybody that was out at Sucker Punch, great time. And we'll see you guys Monday, man. We'll do it all again. Uh, join us tomorrow night. Hey, you guys love the squad cast. We're gonna keep, we're gonna keep the round table momentum going. Uh, starting to tomorrow night, Al. Let them know who we got tomorrow night on tomorrow's well, squad cast. Well, we're gonna do a game of the week preview tomorrow because look, we, like we did yes. last season, we gotta get we're gonna get a game of the week in for every single game. So we're gonna have a guest on tomorrow to preview game two, and then we're gonna do a round table. You want me to tell who's on, who's the panel for the round table? You Everybody. Want me to be- uh, hey, do we man. want to surprise him? Let's surprise him. Let's, Let's surprise. surprise. I was going to say, don't him. tell him. Yeah. 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 I was about to say, like, see people yeah. want Just yeah, tune yeah, in for it, it might be Keith. Com- it might be Keith Pompey. Right, no, right. No, it won't. No, it You're will waiting, not be man. Keith Pompey. That name is no good here. Trust and believe, man. <laughs> nope. <laughs> call back anytime, but call back never. Uh, Get that, man. But yeah, now let's surprise him. Good, good idea, guys. Good idea. Let's surprise him. Oh, surprise. And uh, yeah, man. Great show. What a time, man. Remember that your show is available in audio podcast format. No reason to miss it, but if you did miss it, shout out to the replay gang on a game one victory. And uh, yeah, man, shout out to our sponsors, Underdog Fantasy. Go to underdogfantasy.com. Use our code KFTV for an instant deposit match of up to $100. Shout out to our sponsors at Jordan Craig. 
jordancraig.com. Go to jordancraig.com. Use our code KFTV20 for 20% off for your first order. Plus, our friends at Jordan Craig are giving you guys a chance to win a $200 shopping spree. We're going to announce the winner of that one on next week's Knicks Weekly. But shout out to my guy, Junius Valentine, man, a diehard Knicks fan. Uh, he hit me over the weekend like, yo, let's give this to the fans. So go to jordancraig.com to sign up. You'll see the, the landing page uh, to, to put your email in and sign up. And we're giving you a chance to, uh, to win a $200 shopping spree, courtesy of our friends at jordancraig.com. So shout out to them as well. And once again, shout out to Manscaped, man. Manscaped.com. Use our promo code KFTV for 20% off plus free shipping, man. Uh, CP, JD, Alex. CK Squad Cast Part 2. Another good one in the books and another win for the good guys. Great show, everybody. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Two shows tomorrow. Make sure you guys lock in. We out of here, man. Peace.